Mike, turn your games down. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 241 of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Elberton, also known as... Mm-hmm. Also known as Zemek, who is with me tonight. Wonderful. This is Joe Butler, and my stupid nobody is referred to as Sofix. And my <laughs> weapon is probably two swords or something. I don't know. Oh, I forgot to even say a weapon. My name is Dominic, and of course, in Organization 13, I'd be known as Condomix. So naturally, I will the ketchup and mustard keyblade. <laughs> right, okay, sure, that's a, that's one. Okay, I was thinking of a different kind of other kind of keyblade with that name, but hey, we'll go with that. Uh, hey, everybody, it's it's Lionheart again, aka Manuel, aka Noxil. No, so no, so I don't know, whatever, however the hell you want to say it. See, and you're also the only one of us that owns a keyblade and has yeah. the organization 13 cloak, exactly. I own a, so I own a keyblade. I, oh, yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah, don't but do you have an organization cloak? No, <laughs> you're halfway there, <laughs> and that means that I'm better. I don't have either. And <laughs> I'm you're the puppet, and I'm the real thing. <laughs> oh, Dominic's the puppet, he's the one that sounds a little robotic today, no. so that's true. Beep, beep, boop. <laughs> People. <laughs> so, so we are continuing our Kingdom Hearts journey to for me and Dominic to experience this amazing, fantastic, spectacular series of games. Yes, <laughs> just named a bunch of Spider Man <laughs> and Fanta- and so what are we, so we're here to talk about Kingdom Hearts three hundred and fifty eight slash two days came out for the DS over two oh, over two <laughs> developed by hand published by Square Enix and came out in two thousand and nine for the DS. This was done by hand. Yes. Was recoded done by leg. <laughs> Otherwise like known as the, as the studio that brought you Final Fantasy Fables, Chocobo Tales, and Chocobo's Dungeon. Also did the port of Flower, Sun, and Rain to the DS. They did a bunch of DS games. I'm seeing here. Chocobo's Crystal Tower on Facebook. They also did recoded the port. Wait, this game got ported, or just the, well, just the cutscenes got ported, right? No, recoded, they did recoded it for DS. Oh. Though. Rem- yeah, remember that uh, recoded is a a reversion of. Coded that was only on phones in Japan. And we did the Disney's Magical World 2 and also the Switch version of The World Ends With You. Okay. Oh, no. It all comes around in a circle. (laughs) So I had never played this game before. I thought this game was stupid for over 10 years. (laughs) I was like, that is the dumbest name in the world. It makes no sense. Why the fuck is this? Why is this series that I really loved on DS is how I thought. And I have never touched it until... A couple weeks ago. What about you, Dominic? I mean, what's in a name, right? Like, what does Infinite Undiscovery really mean? But I was always, you know, fine enough. I'm sure it was like one of those things where I figured it made sense when you played it. And, you know, it was on DS and I had a DS, but I never played that many Kingdom Hearts games. So I just naturally avoided it. Okay. And Joe, what year did this come out? 2009. 2009. Okay, that probably makes sense. I was like very much in high school and I didn't have a job, so I couldn't buy this. And it is a Kingdom Hearts game, so either it was extremely hard to find or I had no money. And I also had a girlfriend senior year, so of course it's like, do I play video games or spend time with this girl I'm dating? So I never played it up until now. Games. Yeah, if only, trust me, if only. So I, <laughs> I, I missed this one completely up until now. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, I never played it. I know what happens. I eventually looked up what happened so I wouldn't be confused, but I, I this is my first time playing it. Okay. I'm Amazing. still confused. I looked up what I happened. mean, this is the first time for all of us. Like I I've never I've skipped this and recoded. Like I played pretty much all the other ones, but these two, they were on DS. I didn't have a DS when they came out, and even when I had the DS and I owned physical copies of both this and recoded, <laughs> I still didn't play them. And guess what? I still didn't play them for the podcast. <laughs> I mean, I okay, I, I did play a little bit of it for my show the other day for First Strike, but that's about it. Yeah. I was glad to see. I mean, and you didn't miss a whole lot. I mean, you can kind of watch videos and see what you're getting. Plus, I'm sure you watched the whole cutscene movie. Thing I, at some point. I watched the whole cutscene in the HD 1.5 collection. I mean, it's like saying you could skip Chain of Memories, but Chain of Memories has so much going for it when mm-hmm. you play other games. I, I wish that Chain of Memories just had the cutscenes <laughs> instead of the whole game. I like Chain of Memories, I think. Besides the Riku stuff in the I end, I think I like Chain of Memories. No, what, I think what? that uh, this game does Chain of Memories better. Every so first, better I, Chain I, have Memories. To, I have to say, if you have not played Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, or <laughs> Chain, Chain of Memories, this game will make no sense. <laughs> if, uh, not at all. 
Nope. If you want the if you want the spoilers for two, you can probably play this before two. But I uh-huh. I recommend it and don't recommend it at the same time. I mean, I when I was so I actually played this game on like which I've never done before, and who knows how often I can say I'm going to do this. I played this game on legit hardware. I I had it. I have a 3ds. I got a cartridge. Not uh, not this cartridge, but yeah. I got a cartridge, and I was on it was on that it was on that cartridge, and I played this. The only issue is I couldn't close my DS and shut it down that way because if you closed it, the whole game crashed. I could. So, oh well, yeah, you weren't you weren't playing in a legit cartridge either. But so I yeah. played a real cartridge and real hardware. You probably could close yours. I did. Many. I couldn't. Times. Like it, it, it would crash every time. I can now delete this game off my 3DS because due to how fucking big this game is, <laughs> it now it whenever I loaded it, it now went from loading my 3ds up for three seconds to taking 12 seconds to load up my 3ds how big is it uh half a gig when most most ds games are like less than a gig i think hmm, i wonder if this is like one of the biggest ds games that's out there probably i mean they're interesting there is a lot to this game okay okay yes. so I'll, I'll give you a weird example i the game my my 3ds had not lagged when i put both legend of zelda games 3ds ones, so I have Majora's Mask and I have Link's Awakening, or not Link's Awakening. I had a a 3ds uh, Link Ocarina. Across World. No, uh, oh. uh, Link a Link Between Worlds. Uh, I have the Kirby Robo game and I had a Tetris game. 3ds ran fine. As soon as I loaded up Kingdom Hearts, it started to lag. Wow. <laughs> Maybe this was a game that pushed, you know, the DS. Probably. Maybe. It must have. I mean, like this was. I mean, the DS was a system that they, you know, should have been well familiar with by now. Well, DS came out in like what, 06, right? Or 05? No, 04 or 05? 04. Okay, yeah, they should have been by then. I mean, this would this be the tail in the DS? No, well, not really. Like, 2011 was when 3DS came out. Okay, so this was kind of like still, edging toward the know. end. Mm-hmm. The only like vague memory I had of this game, I, I when I used to live with my ex's family, one of her cousins would come over and he was a, he was a kid, probably 8, 9 or 8, 9 or at the time. And I, I know he had a DS and he had a Kingdom Hearts game. I don't know if he had this one or recoded. I also didn't care at the time because I'm like, well, Kingdom Hearts is stupid. But because it handheld, I didn't like handheld. I yeah. I have something saved on my phone. I'll send it to y'all after this. Apparently, Recoded plays a lot faster than this, so I'm excited to actually play that too. I am too. I'm I am very will say my only knowledge of this game was the was the clock tower scenes. I just know that they existed. Yeah, they also no, had. No, it was my only no film references. Oh, they so sit on the thing and eat the ice cream. I had no idea how much ice cream they were going to eat before I started playing this game. Well, they don't need they don't yeah. need to eat, but they do. Imagine if you tried to go ice cream for ice cream. I mean, you see the amount of sea salt ice cream they eat in this game? It's a lot. Well, they don't get brain freeze. They don't have feelings, you guys. Come on with the program. <laughs> Wait, no, that's wrong. The... I I know, goddammit, but still, you get what I mean. <laughs> this whole this whole game is like it, it you could you could play every scene and then replay the scene of Xemnas going, Nobodies don't have feelings. I'm so sad about what happened. Nobodies don't have feelings. Man, I no. sure do miss my friends. <laughs> no, no, no. no. They, have, have they have no hearts. They do. That do you really need sad. heart to have feelings, considering feelings come from the brain? And the heart that's, pumps blood. The, the, heart, the heart has feelings. The heart's connected to the soul. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the Egyptians didn't think so. No, the Egyptians didn't think so. That's the brain is useless. Because they chop, chop it up. Didn't we talk about this, this in one of the other... Different... Probably. Episodes like different it's not rules, the heart. It's different. not really the heart. It's the soul. What they what they refer to. It's just that it's it's catchier and it's simpler to just say the heart. But it's actually the soul. Yeah. You know what a heart looks like. You don't know what a soul really looks like. And it, it just, exactly. Then to have a soul is a soul. It, this wasn't demon souls. It wasn't exciting back then. <laughs> the, essentially, a soul. I guess in this world it looks like a heart, like a pink heart that floats. And the yeah, moon. The yes. And this came out the same year as demon souls. I think so. Yes. The okay. moon. The moon well, also takes the, the moon also takes the shape of said heart soul for some reason. <laughs> yes, oh, that's just Kingdom Hearts. That's not a moon. It's, it's a, a moon. moon shaped object. Space station. Oh wait. <laughs> no. You know, if you told me that and I never played this, I'd fucking believe you. And part of me still does. <laughs> it could be. I mean, I still don't really know what Kingdom Hearts even is, and I beat multiple of these games now. My, I mean, didn't I played... you see the Death Star in Kingdom Hearts two before going to the world that never was? Like. Now? What the fuck are you talking about? The castle! Yeah, I kind of know what you're talking about. It's literally Death Star. 
So one thing about this game is that this game starts off, you play as Roxas. Roxas is in Organization 13, and you're... So if you haven't played other Kingdom Hearts, so if you haven't played Kingdom Hearts 2, you have no idea who the fuck Roxas is, which Kingdom Hearts 2, you don't either. I mean, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and this game really doesn't explain anything. He just, he just joined the organization because he's a nobody. I don't think they even, like, maybe they go in a little bit about who he is, or, like, they never say where he came from or anything. I know that. They have the, they have the recreation of the scene where he learns his name, Harry Potter style. <laughs> You you say that, but there's actually a reason for that that we're not going to talk about right now. <laughs> God damn it, the series. <laughs> <laughs> but look, but that's, that is the scene that gets recap where he's like told his name is Roxas during like the first week when he's a zombie. I don't. I feel think, like Roxas basically like a zombie. I actually, funny enough, I don't think that scene's in the final mix version, is it? No, uh, which scene? The uh, scene where the scene where he he shows Sora and then he makes his name in the rocks is I don't I don't I'm not 100 percent sure if that scene's originally in Kingdom Hearts two final mix yeah it is it is okay it is yeah I super remember that uh, don't, yeah, you, don't you have it committed to memory <laughs> I know <laughs> oh my god I I read that line too many times in this damn game you know what they make fun of it at the end so it's fine. <laughs> Oh, like when we play Kingdom Hearts 2 and you guys are making that joke, commit it to memory. I'm like, Axel's not even around that long. And then I play this game. And I'm like, oh, I get it now. I mean, Axel is so, the, the big so, player. So, <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. So, Jamie members had cards. And, and the world ends with you has pins. This game has panels. <laughs> uh, I was going to say Tetris, but okay. Yeah. I mean, they're panels, but Tetris is close to. So that I did like the equipment system. I did like the whole idea where you have a grid. It made me think of Resident Evil 4, and then you get different abilities, and you put the abilities or level up panels into this grid, and you max them up, and then you get different things that multiply said, and that's how you equip your spells and your items. I did like that, personally. Okay, we're, we're going to get all the... I do like games where you equip spells, and it changes your stats. We're, we're going to let you guys talk about how much you like this, because I'm going to bitch about it for a good, like, ten minutes. Go ahead. Keep, go, keep going. I have no race in this horse, it, or no horse in this race. <laughs> no race in this it horse. Is more, <laughs> it, it, is, it, is more, it is more intuitive than the card system. Yes. It's a cool way to, like, level up and, like, mess around with, how, like, what your stats are like. You know, the world ends with you has a big slider that you can kind of change to engage the difficulty and how powerful Neku is, but... This is kind of like Final Fantasy VIII, and just like you can really, you know, make rocks is pretty powerful once you have a lot of equipment and like uh, slots down. You can also vary your character so much. Like, I mean, I would actually, in certain fights, not telling you to end the game, actually have to go through and redo my board so I could have a different, you know, yes. setup when I went into the fight. I had a, I had two slots saved. One was for my main one, and the other one was in case. Uh, it was like, oh hey, uh, this this boss is weak to ice or fire or whatever. So I switch over to that right. slot and, and equip magic. And this game also really makes you want to use magic. I felt, and I thought yeah, that I was agree. really cool. Like it's overpowered. The, the other games didn't. Well, they, the other games didn't really engage with the system in the same way. So having these panels made you have to think about everything a lot more strategically. I personally liked it. I liked how you carry items. You only had so many items and how you had to carry the spells and then you get the multiplier things that would take up a different Tetris spot. And you have to put the spells in there that you want that have double cast or more power. I got I really got into it. And each it mission you beat, you get another panel. Usually and sometimes you can even get more panels in the mission if you find a certain chest. And so it's just a matter of figuring out do I want to input more like another potion? Do I want more magic? Do I have enough space to put some kind of multiplier on the board again? It was really cool. And, I mean, you can really get into the weeds of just like, like specking and respecking over and over. And it's pretty simple to do it. I didn't like it at first, but after a while, it grew on me, I would say within a couple hours, especially, I mean, way late in this game, I got an auto life thing that was on every single time. And that, I love that. But yeah, it was, it was a cool system. I, I appreciate it more in the cards because I was able to do more. I don't like the card system, but that's a different episode. Well, the, the, the current problem with card system is that there's a degree of randomization, right? Like, you, like Marvel snaps taught me. No, I guess. Well. Not not super randomization because you know the order the cards are going to be in and everything yeah. like that. It's more of like your cards versus your opponent's cards. But with the panels, it's you just know what you have and you know what you're dealing with. Yeah, it's a it's a cool equip system. I, I shit on it. <laughs> Go ahead. I will <laughs> say I was ha I had the opposite reaction where I was having a good time until like the last half of the game. Why the fuck does Kuraga become an area of effect that you have to stand in, and it also helps out your you know, it also says in the description, oh, it also helps out your, uh, you know, your allies. What allies? I am here by myself right now. Both God damn it. For multiplayer, of course. This is the one with multiplayer. 
I play like a hat game. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was multiplayer, but none of us were doing it. But I mean, I guess the idea yeah, that no. you you do have allies sometimes. But no, you're right. Near the end of the game, they're like fucking allies. Well, everybody's also a lot of them are dead at that point. <laughs> I mean, having having Kiraga be an AOE thing and not a spell spell is kind of annoying. I will say. Yeah, and Kira I, also I being a, like uh, thing is also weird. I went straight high potions near the near the midway of the game or so. I just I stopped using Kira because it just wasn't useful. Compared to potions. Oh, you, you use high potions? Yeah. Why, why didn't you use mega potions, Mike? I didn't want to. Yeah, because they only do 50% of your health and other and other fucking... Uh, oh, that's why. Yeah, I probably yeah. read the description and said, no, I'll stick with high potions. But it was usually enough to have just a high potion. I mean, I, I think this game would be... I was going to say, I think this game would be really cool if we got to experience you know, having the other characters there. But I mean, I liked there, it in the intro. Care. When, like, for the, the tutorial of this game is long, too. It's like an hour to two hour tutorial of you using... Mm-hmm all the different characters to try to like get the, all the different systems of the game to teach you. And you that was characters? a bit. I don't think I even finished the tutorial when I did the stream right fucking long. I just no. got paired up with them. I never got to play as them. No, but you, I mean, you only can play them if you did the mission mode, I think. Yes. Which I, I know the mission mode does like you can do missions in there and then you get certain stuff that you, then you can then transfer over to the main, or you get stuff that you unlock that you can then use in the main game to buy stuff from the Moogle. Yes. But I didn't care. Is the an HD remake of this game It'd be a great opportunity to resurrect that co-op? Yeah, that's not happening. That the, is not happening. The, they had their the, chance. The mission mm-hmm. mode for this, the mission mode for this game, froze my 3DS the first time I used it. So I didn't try to use it for the rest of the game, and then I tried doing it again because I told a manual on stream and it worked. And I was like, well, <laughs> I only have like fucking 20 days left, so I'm not using this. <laughs> no, I, I just didn't interest me. No. I do find it amusing how you have all these other characters that you get, and then shortly on, and like, and, and like after every time you finish a mission in this game, you go back to the to the main like lobby of the of the castle where they're all just chilling. And as the game progresses, and this game is taking place during the same time of Chain of Memories, they all start disappearing for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> I did like it. Was that. kind of it was cool seeing how the the plot events lined up with everything else. Mm-hmm. My favorite plot point is, all right, guys, we're all we're sending people to Castle Oblivion <laughs> one week later. All right, guys, everyone in Castle Oblivion is dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, was it really just one week? I don't know. It's something like that. It's not long. I mean, they no, killed it was everybody. more than a couple days, which is what, you know, Shannon memories make it seem like. Yeah. They killed everybody. I think. Um, it, I don't know. I can't remember. OK, go ahead. They don't say Castle Oblivion either. They call it CO. CO. Right. Do they? You, you, yeah. You're gonna RTC to CO. Yeah. R- oh. oh god, that was that was so annoying all the time because to shorten in this game, probably to save on tech space, instead of saying return to cast, return to castle is always RTC. We're ready to RTC. No. Mm-hmm. It's it's the slang. You gotta be in it. You know, you gotta be working for the organization to really get it, man. I don't know why, but it bothered me. It, it it's return to corridor, I believe. Oh, no, no, it's return it? to castle. Is it? Uh, I thought it was return to corridor, like the dark corridor. That's what that that's what that thing they go into is called. The dark corridor. Uh no, I'm pretty sure it's castle. Yeah, because you're sure in castle. the uh, you're in like the land, the castle that never was. It's the world that never was. So technically, it's not a castle. But it has That's a castle it shape. Like a castle. It is a castle. Yeah, I don't know. They they <laughs> never actually say what it means, so it's whatever. And then I, Castle Oblivion, they just say CO all the time, and it it took something I'd be confused. I'm like CO, who's the commanding officer? Oh yeah, it's Castle Oblivion. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? When they they say it at first, and then they make and then they make it clear. Oh, it means CO. Yes. I don't know. It, it, um. um but no, it's cool to see all that happening and also interesting how it, it gives a lot of context, I think, to that whole missing year in the way that prequels can do. And also, you know, it has to wrap up in a way where nothing that actually happens in it affects Kingdom Hearts 2 very much. Yes. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, if Shion had been there, that would have been one thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> we receive also a couple of interesting uh, tidbits. Uh, Emmanuel, shut up. Uh, one thing, Michael and Dominic, for your notes, they <laughs> later on in the story, they reference that they're looking for something in Castle Oblivion. <laughs> Shut up, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, that is something to write down on your Kingdom Hearts notes to remember, because that's actually really important to the story. <laughs> I'm sure Birth by Sleep will tell us a lot of things. <laughs> oh no, this game this game teases a lot of Birth by Sleep. <laughs> okay. I just want to make Birth by Sleep. It was the one that they were teasing for Kingdom Hearts 2. Yes. So this game just yes. kind of was there also. Well, that was in the final mix version, right? That they teased it, or was that in the reg- in the reg- in the regular game? No, no the regular a- game. It, oh, it, yeah, the regular uh, 
the the like bonus uh, ending is like that the weird battle that makes absolutely no sense to me. Well, no. Um, be- before the battle, it was just three people in armor walking up yeah. to grab keyblades. That was okay. the original teaser. Yeah. Yeah. Which also made no sense to me. It's okay. It it's made not supposed sense, to. No sense to anyone at the time. Yeah. <laughs> the the ongoing theory for that that was we were gonna get three Kingdom Hearts. Where Kingdom Hearts. That was a teaser for Kingdom Hearts 3, and we were supposed to get an adult Riku, Kairi, and Sora as Keyblade Masters, was what the mm-hmm. de- ongoing theory was for God knows how fucking long. Ooh. And then that got disproven, so. <laughs> okay. I wasn't involved in Kingdom Hearts really at that time. I mean, so, I mean, I always thought this game was a spinoff, and this game is also not a spinoff. This game is part of the series. No. Every game tells a part of the story. It's Except transmedia everybody. before transmedia was really a thing. Okay, so are we can talk about that. About what? About about Kingdom Hearts 358 by two days being transmedia. What? <laughs> just the Go agony ahead. in his voice. You just hear like, it's just like, why am I here? Why did I sign up for this Kingdom Hearts stuff? I only like two of the game. I feel like you're holding something back. Just tell me. <laughs> oh, no, nothing. It's, I, I don't want to. We, we don't we're not digging that deep into the story, but it's it's very much. I have I have like at least my best friend is also trans and I have other friends that are trans and who and one of them has played this game and Gion's story. Part of the actual dialogue of the story is whenever I want to say it's whenever Z- Xion ends up falling asleep the first time, Saiyax ends up calling Xion an it, and Rock just gets mad and he's like, "She's not an it, she's a she." And it's like, "Oh, okay, whatever. I don't really care. You do you. Bye, guys." And then uh, we have oh, the oh, yes. So yes, there's that transmedia. I was talking about transmedia as in like existing beyond just a video game or existing beyond just. A series of just single video games, as in it is going all over the place and popping up in different games and books and everything else. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's not two, but yeah. Ironically, what they did with the Matrix after the Matrix came out. Also, was was Zeon one thing that kind of? How do you say it? Zeon. 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 S H. I mean, I've heard how everybody pronounces it in the game too, so it's like Zeon, Zeon, whatever. Oh, as yeah, long as those the thing with her, like, I was very confused because, like, I play Kingdom Hearts 2 and you see and Chain of Memory, so you see all the Organization 13 members, and all of a sudden you have this random girl that's here, and I'm She's like, 14. I'm like, wait, I don't remember her in the in the, in Kingdom Hearts 2 or Chain of Memories, and then I I text you guys, you're like, <laughs> no, she wasn't there, and I'm just like, what the hell? Uh, well, you man, don't remember? It's hey, always you don't remember her. 14 <laughs> members. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why you don't remember how she or anyone else. Chairs. <laughs> well, once so, it wasn't invented yet, but yeah, no, there, there's also a story reason why I don't want to remember, so it's okay. There, I just thought it was really funny that they're like, "Did you ever see a chair being put here?" No, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that, the goddamn sadness. There are some real assholes in Organization 13, but I mean, I also oh. felt like you really get to kind of know them throughout the story of this game, where you didn't get, I didn't get that in Kingdom Hearts 2 as much. Well, of, of course they're assholes. They don't have hearts. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Riku's an asshole. And he has a heart, so Riku's That's trying to make Riku's. Come on, how do you you, you dare slander best boy? Riku's so trying. He, said... he has more arcane reasons to help out his friends, quote unquote, than Dumbledore does. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Ri- Riku's mm. trying to make sure his boyfriend wakes up from a coma. Okay, it's very very simple anime stuff. Oh yeah, because he's in the coma throughout this entire game. Uh, and this is the year of what happened after Chain of Memories happened, and then he gets put inside that like flower thing. Yes. He he's in a coma for some of the game because remember that the some of the events take place before Chain during of Memories. Shade. Yeah. Okay, and this and this game also happened because in Kingdom Hearts one, when he becomes a heartless, he loses his heart, and that's mm-hmm. why Roxas is born. Exactly. But then he gets yeah, a heart. And then also, Kyrie was there and part of that. So the part of Kyrie's memories and also that necessitated the need for a second nobody. But really, it was a puppet, and the memories of Kyrie are now in Xion's mind. Mm-hmm. So those memories are extra special, so they're sequestered away in an entirely different person. And to make Sora wake up, one of those two people needs to die, because I guess there can be only one nobody. Basically. Who wants to live I mean, at the end of the day, forever? they both needed to die. <laughs> Who wants to live it's, forever? It's, so it's, the, but the transfer of memories can only come back. Back from one person to another, even though theoretically it could have been sent out to two different people. That's what I think too. No, it's stupider than that. <laughs> <laughs> so they so they say they lopped off part of Roxas's memories and put it in Xion. Then no. So Jesus funny, Christ. 
funny enough, this is where Final Mix actually comes important. In Chain of, in Chain of Memories during Castle Oblivion, they make a replica of Riku, which is basically almost a right. perfect a person basically almost a perfect replica. They establish that they can make replicas. The fi- the secret the secret boss for Kingdom Hearts One involves you fighting Xehanort. I also looked all of this up. I'm sorry. I have issues with this series, especially because me and my husband argue about what the fucking canon lore is sometimes. <laughs> like we we one night we went three hours about talking about shit and until we, we decided to look it up. So during the secret boss fight for Kingdom Hearts One while fighting Xemnas, who you don't know is Xemnas, but he's there. He scans Sora to create a replica. The reason why. Now, originally, which is also funny story-wise, Mike mentioned to it and Dominic very much alluded to it. It's very weird to see how at one moment Rox is talking to Xion and she looks like Kairi. And then when it goes to Axel, she has her hood up. Because technically up until I think like it's like a certain day, like day 100 or something, she is technically faceless. She does not have a face. No, she's basically just like a bald-headed person. Um, But only Roxas can see her face. Roxas, Roxas sees her like that because he's Sora's nobody, and when Sora absorbed Kyrie's heart, that basically fucked everything up. Yes, <laughs> and I told y'all it was going to, and no one believed me, but it did. Like Dominic, you brought up in the chat that one scene, and I didn't, I didn't catch it that that happened where you would, where it would jump all of a sudden her hood would be up and her hood is down. I didn't catch it, and it wasn't until yes, you Emmanuel was like, you beat the game, like you know this, and then it clicked. I'm like, oh, okay. So, it was literally like one sh- shot and then the other shot was different. It was like, you know, a continuity mistake. It's uh, no. It, well, that's why I, I said keep going until you finish the game because it's everybody it makes perceive sense. everybody perceives and sees Shion in a different way. Or at it, least, you know, the ones closest to her would obviously like see her face or her or, or her true face. The way and she others would herself. just exactly or how she perceives herself or uh others and would just saw- see Oh, rocks is in it. Oh, uh, yes. You, uh, mm-hmm. you, you thought that was Mike? You did you think that was Roxas? Mm-hmm. Who is she on? No, no so there's, there's a part there's, where, so, where, where we see Sora. No, there's a part. The yes. part was the part where Zigbar. The part where yes. Zigbar is is they go with Zigbar and Zigbar I, looks at Shion. I alluded and, to this last night. Yeah, and so that's Roxas, right? That then that's not in the cloak. Like he's a full I outfit. Think so. Cool. Let's just keep that in mind and not worry about that right now, because as <laughs> as of game timeline wise, we have no idea who that is. I have no idea who you're talking about, so it's okay. Uh, I'll look at the uh, picture. I'll, I'll keep talking about stupid shit. Go ahead. Okay. Maybe some Ventus Aqua bullshit, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably. Is. But we're not. We keep. We don't even know about yet, and we won't know until. Yeah, just don't worry about it right now. That's yeah, don't, don't, don't think about that right now. Next podcast, we'll come back to it. God, we'll come back to it. I can't. But, I can't wait yes. to play that. By the way, okay. Shion has no faith except for Roxas and a couple other people, maybe. And at the end of the game, she becomes a real boy. <laughs> now, hmm. when you see me as Sora, my time is up. So okay. I was thinking she was Kyrie's nobody for a while, I mean, too. Uh, yeah, I was. It looks like her. But yeah, it looks like Kyrie, and she can use a Keyblade. And can't Kyrie use a Keyblade, too, eventually, in 3? She's supposed to. <laughs> okay, I've just seen, like, promo stuff, and I've seen her, and nice. I've seen people have her with a Keyblade. She had a That's Keyblade, too, for a second. Yeah. Okay. No, my theory though was ba- it was basically the same theory that the game one was because you know Sora became nobody, so Kyrie naturally had to have a nobody too. But Kyrie already had a nobody, which was Namine. Oh yeah, right. But but Namine is also nobody for both of them. But Kyrie needs to have her own nobody, just like Sora has his own nobody. No, Namine is just Kyrie's nobody. The the thing is with Namine is that because Kyrie's heart is linked to Sora, that's why she can manipulate his memories. But Xion is just a fabrication. Like it's yeah, right. the, it's a replica. Learn that later, yes. The, My, the, uh, hmm. the the idea behind Xion is that she's supposed to take everything. She's basically supposed to replace Sora completely. That's why at the end she ends up looking like Sora. Yes, which that was really strange. By the way, with uh, her voice and Sora's body, it <laughs> is like, weird. Ah! <laughs> I don't like um, this. question: Was that what Riku saw? Then was did he see R- Sora's face? So when, I. He did I have thought, a blindfold on, by the way, so he saw nothing. I thought, but he, he but he did take off like the a little bit of his blindfold to look at Shion when he defeated her the first time, oh, and he was yeah. like, "Why do you look like that?" No, oh, he probably saw Sora then. Yeah, that's what I'm or, thinking. Or, or is he one of the organization members in two that sees Roxas but sees Sora at the same time? I, he hadn't seen, he hadn't met Roxas yet at that point, so and Roxas so, was nothing like Sora. <laughs> sure, which. 
I don't understand. Nobody. Oh. <laughs> I still don't get why some nobodies just how different they look. Oh. It's okay. Don't, ah. don't worry. Don't worry about it right now. Don't okay. worry it's, about it. You know what? <laughs> I, I'm gonna give the most blatant reason. It's to, to avoid spoilers. Because if you started Kingdom Hearts two and Roxas looked like Sora, you'd be even more confused. Let's just go with that. Okay. Or we'll go with Kingdom I'm Hearts. I'm starting to form a theory of my own based on everyone being evasive. If you want, I'm gonna say it now. Go ahead. Okay. So I know that Birth by Sleep is a is a distant prequel, and there was a Keyblade War, and all these things are happening. So my guess is, for some reason, these nobodies are the spirits of all these people from back then who, for some reason, are coming back as these nobodies from the souls of the current people. Mm. That's a good theory. I, I have why? no idea. No, but... Mm. Now, can you remember this for the next four months when we finally do get around to Birth by Sleep? you got to commit it to everyone's it. Everyone's avoiding things. That, that <laughs> no, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> mm. yeah, commit it to memory, as Emmanuel said. Oh, fucking A. Oh, but uh, one thing I want to talk about was, like, the gameplay. Or no, we should finish the story, or that part of the story, then we'll jump back in. But, like, with Shion, I mean, she she's a puppet, you find out, or we talk about that. But then, like, the ending, I guess she becomes, like, Roxas absorbs her, essentially, after he kills her. So, I have a funny thing to say about that, which is sure. also super funny. So, uh, basically, there, there there can only be one who can who can be Sora's memories, and uh, Xion is made to where she basically absorbs everything, no matter what. And she, I guess the reason why she looks like Sora is because of those machines that they put up. Emmanuel, what are you doing right now? I'm not doing anything. Okay, go look up the final boss fight real quick. For... For 358 by two days. Because funny enough, that game teases Kingdom Hearts 3 and Birth by Sleep, because Xion has an ability, which is basically just something called Shot Lock from Birth by, from Birth by Sleep, and and then uh, she has like these keyblade transformations, which is only in three. And also, if you look at each phase, the final phase where she's huge, she's wearing Sora's outfit from Kingdom Hearts 2. Mm. Okay, I'm seeing a little bit of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, whenever he defeats her, she no longer exists. And then, so the idea is, is she can't exist because they built her memories on top of a fake memory. So whenever they kill her, since technically no one all these memories are fake. I don't know. It's really hard to explain, and I'm trying to think of a way to explain it. But that's why when they when they kill her, she no, no one remembers her because there is no real memories that are really attached to her because the memories attached to her are from Sora. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then from somebody else. So they go back to him, and, he, and she has no reason to be. Yeah. The, funny enough, though, she on dying is how people die in the Kingdom of Hearts universe. So her crystallizing, if you see anyone else do that, they are dead for good. Okay. Yeah, so that that's also an intake of 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 also an idea of well, did that person really die? I don't know. Did they crystallize? I don't know. Who really knows anymore? This games are weird. <laughs> I liked her a lot in this game. I I I, I didn't. I was very really confused. Like I forgot she had a keyblade for like a very small amount of time, and then she just used spells. I'm like, oh hey, she's great when she's on my team. She got spells. I also learned something that I never knew in this game series. Yeah, What's that? that Roxas is dual wielding his Keyblade and her Keyblade. I never knew that. And that's like the most badass fucking thing that I can think of. Oh, in that end <laughs> scene? Yeah, in that end okay. scene where he, he goes back, to which Riku probably shouldn't have stopped him, because I think he basically says he's going to go back and take out Organization and the uh, Kingdom Hearts, right? Yeah, that he's he was going to take out uh, Kingdom Hearts. Because he's essentially yeah. making them Kingdom Hearts, because he's the one collecting the hearts for them, because they can't collect hearts because yes. they don't have a Keyblade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Shion. Yeah, that's what they make her because they need they need they're like, well, we need we need more than one person to do it since we can't do it. But isn't that what you're doing in Kingdom Hearts 2 also is you're making them Kingdom Hearts 2, but not by choice. But mm-hmm. yes. OK, because Sora also has a Keyblade. Yeah, I want to. Oh, and then Mickey and Riku do, too. I want to say probably at the end of 358, they're probably like 70 percent done with making Kingdom Hearts. I don't fucking know. Maybe. Who knows? Because in two, they, they finish it, if I remember correctly. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then and then Ansem blows it up with a machine that he made because he's an asshole. <laughs> the real Ansem, not the, the real Ansem, not the fake one. Oh, yeah, and the real Ansem's in this, but he's only known as Diz. And wasn't that Count Dooku's voice too? Mm, it's one of the yes, Count Dooku's, but it, so it's weird because I I I don't know if maybe in 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 the original game because I didn't get to that part. I don't know if in the original game they used uh, Christopher it, Lee's voice. It sounded just like him because. They did. In okay, in the in the behind the voice and all that, it says that it's him. But when I hear it in in the movie, it's Corey Burton. Like I can distinguish both of them pretty pretty well. 
I mean, he point. might have been if they re-recorded it. He might have been passed away by then, so or been too sick Let's to do see. it. Again. I don't. Let's I, see. It, here's the deal. I've looked. I've I've already looked whether or not it, it is them. But if you look for uh look for like a voice comparison video, you can like hear like whose lines are or who who is who in, in terms of you know the voice. So it's okay. it's I I don't know. Right, so I, could, Chris Hurley is credited specifically. Because it really is, is credited specifically for two and days. Yeah. Corey I, Burns I, is everything else. Exactly. I look, That's what I'm saying, that I looked it up and it said that it was him in in 358 over two days. But when I hear it in the game, it's not him to me. Like, it's it's Corey Burton. Like, I again, I you know. Only want, you mostly only watch the movie version. Yes. That's why I say so I don't know possible. if in the original game... Right. It had uh, his audio. I just know that in the movie, it's it sounds like Curry Bird and not Christopher Lee. For those listening, you so can tell us on Discord. Exactly. It's entirely possible that uh, they had to record more lines for the movie version. So they just thought, why don't we just redo it all? Could be. Yeah, or, or just had to redo them anyway because the audio wasn't was not good enough for exactly. everything else they were doing. We're, we're also pretty far in this where we haven't made a Twitter joke where we are not part or affiliated <laughs> with with the company X <laughs> or the app. I, I have a fun question for uh, Mike and Dominic. Uh, yes. What? I- so if Roxas is Sora with an X, what's she on? That's, that's what I'm usually asking myself. It is. Um, it is an anagram for N O I, which is number imaginary because she does not exist. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, so my 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 funnier right. one my funnier one, which is what my husband says that it is, and I I also believe him too. It's also an anagram for no, imaginary number zero because in the weird Japanese thing, technically there's still organization thirteen because you don't go from one to thirteen, you go from zero to thirteen. Oh. <laughs> mm. oh. Mm. And of course, you know, just to drive all this home, at one point, someone uses Axel's real name. Do they? For one second. Yes. Do they? I did not catch this. Oh. Uh, who was it? I think it was uh, Sykes that uses it's, his name, Lee. Yeah, it's probably Sykes because... Oh, because they're boyfriends? They are... They have marital issues, so... They have marital issues. Yes. Now Axel uh, found a new boy. <laughs> yes, he found yeah. a new boy toy. Sykes is jealous. <laughs> In Roxas. <laughs> No one ever invites Syax butthurt up in his office. No one ever fucking invites me out for ice cream anymore. <laughs> That's the blue haired guy, right? That's like the main villain in this game. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's, Sykes. Okay. He's not. Sykes. He's not. Got it memorized. No. Nope. God damn it. Emmanuel, I hate you so much. Syax, oh, I, who, on, on, uh, on Wikipedia, it has the, the, I guess, the names. Don't, don't, no, no. Get yeah, out of here. Get, yeah, get out, out of there, Tom. <laughs> Aboard. Aboard. <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> help! 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 <laughs> All right, we yeah, just learned the stuff we're that's in the game. Is this I mean, you can make a level thread right now that you're doing. You, Stop. You, you, you can, you can take their name and figure out what their names are. It's just not interesting because I don't know why Axel sounds cool, but it's like, well, what's his real name? Oh, it's Lee. You Lee. spell Lee with an A. What the fuck? And mm-hmm. obviously, like Thompson. And obviously, Syax would be Issa. It's the only Isa. thing that it's, which is still stupid, but it's like Syax sounds cool. Yeah, but what's his real name? Uh, I guess we'll go with Issa. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Will this come to play eventually? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, trust me. There's only like three things that don't make sense right now, and it's fine. Like I, I can, more than that, but well, sure. No, 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 no. I I can confirm like ninety percent of everything that happens in these games get confirmed one way or another one of them i'm very happy with because i called it like decades ago wow. wow i'm looking forward to knowing what that is too i'll text it to you real quick oh god here we go <laughs> yes the, the last thing to enjoy the last thing memory of this game is really just seeing axel Sheon and roxas enjoy ice cream it is and, it and is. It, it's, it's trying to be very it's much bitter, the dog it's days just like the the ice cream it's bittersweet i was also thinking how they only get one day off throughout this entire year they get one vacation day. And Roxas doesn't know what the hell to do with it. Yeah, it just it's made me laugh. I'm like, these guys work a lot. It's ironic and sad because Kingdom Hearts 2 opens up with summer vacation. And then this game ends with, I guess my summer vacation is over. Oh, yeah. it's, it's really interesting knowing now that uh, Roxas was literally just shoved into that that role with no prior warning, basically. Yeah, he's just suddenly friends with a painter and pence and all that. Painter! 
fence. Oh, I mean, he sees him in here, but I he guess. doesn't. They don't recognize him, obviously. Well, I mean, I actually, he, well, they don't know who he is. I want to talk about that later on, like, but not yet about how he got shoved in because I don't really understand what happened. So, well, we it's a it's a situation of well, he only met them like. Wait, would you really remember a kid you met like twice during the summer? Like, I mean, yeah, to be know, fair, yes. Passed them by. But I have a weird. Would you? Yeah, oh, no. no, I have a really good memory for faces, and and I can like remember people. That I just ran like. I have literally seen people that came into a store once where I was working, and then I never, and I see them again somewhere randomly. Oh, and I, and I recognize them. So I, I have a, I'm very good with faces. Yes, that's yeah. me. That's not normal. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> one one gameplay thing that I did like because it's something not really brought about, but I do like it in this. Uh, you have gear that you equip for your first for Roxas throughout the game, and it's basically yes. essentially supposed to be keyblades. I do like all the organization themed keyblades that he gets. They're all pretty cool. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, funny, uh, f- funny enough, that also that also falls to where if you uh, so in multiplayer mode you can play as the other organization members. If you so basically it's the same concept where your equipment carries over to them, so their weapons also change if you have different gear equipped. So like if you have like oh, interesting, yeah. So if you have like the magic gear equipped to I'll, someone give me a random organization member, Zigbar. If you if you equip it to Zigbar, Zigbar's guns will change to a completely different weapon. Well, not not they're still oh. guns, but they're they're shaped differently. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really interesting. I did like how the weapons change. I I did get a kick out of that when you would equip different combo stuff and you'd see different weapons. And I also didn't realize I was watching a video after I finished playing this game where the guy's like, "Yeah, you want to equip the magic stuff because that's actually your most powerful keyblade combo because the combo's shorter and the and the killer hit the final hit is what does the real damage." And I'm like, "Oh, that would have been nice to know." If you beat the game and restart it, if you go to the the one thing we haven't talked about yet, the organization Moogle. So Glu- cute. He's the glue me- number. The Glumex uh, organization number 0. 0.5. Uh, he, uh, if you go back to him after you beat in the game, he has something called Zero Gear Equip, which you can buy off of him, and you can give that to Roxas, and it lets him do wield. So you can go back Hell and yeah. do missions. Oh, that's fucking back- cool. Yeah, you can go back, but it's, it costs like 30,000 hearts. <laughs> that's a lot. I had so 10,000 when I beat the game. So it's good, let's talk into something about the structure of the game, which is that this is a very mission-based game versus uh, the other ones being more just floor or just story-oriented. Yeah, fu- funny enough, that's kind of the point with a lot of handheld games because it's supposed to be... I, I, I've brought it up numerous times for Mike, which is, I think is funny. It's supposed to be an idea that you can play them between doing stuff, so that way you... Which I don't fucking believe because I've died like two or three times to a couple of these fucking bosses and got my ass handed to me. But, like, you're supposed to be able to play a mission and then shut your DS and then go on with your day. And then, oh, I'm I'm waiting for my meal at McDonald's. Let me pop this open and well, that's blah, blah, just blah. That, I mean, it's a handheld game. And it's just, picking, you know, it was it was designed just like many other games probably would have been at this time for PSP and other stuff where, you know, it's meant to last you for, like, a train ride or meant to last you for just, right. like, okay, you got 20 minutes. Pop open, you got 10 minutes. You know, you play a mission, you close it, and you put it away. And you felt like you did something. Mm-hmm. What? boss were y'all talking about by the way that y'all were having issues with the fucking the coffin, coffin guy. with my my worst boss. the coffin the one that like has like tentacles and it can eat you and spit you out from the yes. top yeah fuck yes. that thing okay i thought mm-hmm. that's what you were talking about that thing fucking blue ass that was, that was the worst gotta be one of the worst bosses i've ever fought in a game that's up there i feel like i've dealt with worse or I, i've imagined worse because this was pretty bad but I, I don't know how how many times i had to like decrease difficulty to get it done i beat him partly by luck <laughs> partly by using the guide where i would just you kill the tentacles that come out nearby him and then after you kill them all he'll stagger for a bit but i would have to do it where i got hit right before it so i could go into limit break mode so then i would and and not die then subdue him and do a limit break to actually get rid of like half his health because otherwise you just you can't you you get like one or two hits off and then he he just beats the shit out of you if you get if that tentacle comes out it was a bad yeah. fight I killed a couple tentacles and mostly just spent the time baiting him into that attack and then attacking him right after and then baiting him into the attack and attacking him right after. Okay. It made me wish I had save states. It made me curse the fact that I was playing this on legit hardware, not on a Steam Deck. I was very upset about that, by the way. <laughs> but you can play this on a Steam Deck, by the way, just fine from what I saw on YouTube. Some guy that reviewed it played it on a Steam Deck. So Because you don't really... I, there's no touch screen. I've seen the fucking weirdest way how a guy plays uh, DS games on his computer. And it's this guy that I liked the video on TikTok, and he likes soup. And I'm not going to lie, I saw Emmanuel playing this game on his computer. It looked fucking amazing on the computer. Like, nothing's blocky. It looks like a PS2 game. Oh, yeah. But, 
But the way the guy was playing is he he uses a DS emulator. He smooths everything out. But then he has an Xbox controller with like the phone attachment, and his phone is the second screen. Oh, that's oh, cool. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I want to say too, like, hey, I like the mission structure. It, it kind of oversays welcome a little bit. But I also do want to marvel at the fact that they got a DS to run a Kingdom Hearts game in full, not like a <laughs> 2D pixel version. Mm. Oh, wait, makes me get... think like what a Nintendo 64 Kingdom Hearts would have looked like. That'd be cool. And that's fair. I but, mean, that's kind of what this technology. I mean, it's better than that, but it's it's more closer right. to the level. But I'm like the mission structure was what it was, and I think in some ways I really liked it because my main concern I think with the other Kingdom Hearts games is that you go there, you experience the story for the world, and then that's it. Yeah, I kind of liked it a lot more kind of having to go back here and there and kind of seeing different scenes play out without it being like a, oh, I got to help intervene with like a beginning to end story. And it's just like, oh, they're doing stuff. Beast is being a beast and <laughs> Aladdin's <laughs> worried about this or that. Beast Castle sets up for Kingdom Hearts 2. Do you guys notice that? No, no. Uh, yeah. So Kingdom Hearts 2 is basically about uh, Beast trying to be in the castle. But the, the plot point with the organization for that is uh, you find out Zaldin's trying to turn Beast into a Heartless. So during 358, you bring Zaldin to Beast Castle, and he's very interested in Beast and the Rose. And oh, like, yeah, he was. Yeah, and it's really weird. And Roxas is like, dude, what's up with you? And he's like, nothing, don't worry about it. And he just kind of goes away. But it, that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be setting up for why he's doing what he does in Kingdom Hearts 2. I thought that was really cool as well. That is that is cool. I do dig that. I didn't remember what he did in 2. <laughs> And he's just kind of there. <laughs> he he like I said he he steals the rose and he gets the idea that they can turn they can turn Beast into a heartless and then have Sora kill him and then that'll add a big juicy because I think the boss hearts are a lot bigger too and that'll add to the Kingdom Hearts becoming bigger and it fails though because Bell elbows him in the fucking dick and she gets away. <laughs> <laughs> she does elbow him in the dick. It's yeah, really weird. Does. Yeah. Well, he's just like, he's not dickless that... apparently. <laughs> I don't, I don't no, mind the fact that we to revisit <laughs> all these fucking old worlds again, even though I fucking hate Wonderland. But seeing again, seeing just like stuff happen and not having to worry about it being a full plot was at least relieving in that way. Is it weird that they're still looking for Sora, Donald, and Goofy in Wonderland? What I didn't mean? catch that they were. Yeah, because it it so in in the there's a mission where you're with uh Zigbar, Zaldin, Zig, the guy with the cards. Uh, the guy with the cards. Luxord. Yeah, no, Luxord's important. Remember that too. Uh, Luxord goes there and they're like, oh, we're looking for th- these three people and you're looking for three Neo Shadows. And, right. but, yes. No, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah right. I thought and the Neo like, Shadows oh, were what they were looking for. I didn't realize it was Donald, Goofy, and. Sora. Yeah, well, it, it kind of leads to it because whenever you leave, Luxord's, uh, uh, Roxas is like, oh, yeah, we defeated the Heartless, so I guess they'll be looking for nothing at all. But it looks where it's like, well, I mean, they, they should have found them by now if they were looking for them. Maybe the three Heartless we defeated weren't the trio that they were searching for that we thought of. And Rox is like, what do you mean? And he's like, think, idiot. And he's like, oh, no. And they leave because Rox is <laughs> Rox is just technically only like a year, like six months old at this point. So, I mean, he's not that smart. Yeah, they're not really helping him that much. I mean, they're they're keeping it very close to the chest. Oh, yes. they fuck. Annoyingly they fuck, so. They fuck with Rox throughout this whole thing. What is it? Uh. The, the dude with the hammer axe pops Roxas in the mouth. Fucking the the guy with the shield. Fu- I can't remember all the fucking names. I'm sorry. It's like 13 no, that's people. fine. Uh, the guy with the shield calls Roxas an idiot because he can't figure out what they're investigating. I also hate the investigation feature. That whole feature was Same. fucking annoying. It's kind of really of that, and I, that They're in tons of missions. Ugh. They bring them back every so often. I mean, there's not... Okay, I shouldn't say there's a ton of them. There's about one for each world. Mm-hmm. Maybe two in one world or so, but they're just really fucking I prefer those annoying. much more to the fucking get the emblems before the green circle runs out. You can get them when the circle's still there. You just get less points without the circle. You can still get them because I did. I know, but I that was more annoying to me than running around the map looking for random spots to investigate, quote unquote. That That's easy. Now, the, the worst thing for me was the freak, the, the frantic looking around of like the enemies you had to sneak past because... Like sometimes they'll look left and right. Sometimes they won't look won't look right at all. Sometimes you you think you have them, but they'll snap back to look at you, and it's just like, God damn, can I just fucking jump over the shit? They can't see me if I'm jumping. Too. Yeah, they have some dumb stuff. I I won't lie. So, but I mean, I, do we like the mission structure? Do people hate it here? I do personally. Yes, I, I like think that. it I was think... really cool because again, this was a game that was made for mobile. You know, not mobile, but you know, handheld. So it, I really liked. It. I thought it was a cool feature. Yeah, there, there's a couple of them I like. I like the ones where you can, like, I think you have to fight the deserter Heartless, and they all die in one hit, but there's tons of them. That was pretty fun. And they get yeah. really pissed when you kill them. Yeah. The bosses were pretty cool. I do like that there's other 
they like they didn't rehash a lot of the bosses from the first game. The manual. Mm-hmm. One of the things I was talking about with the dual screens is uh, when you're in the Coliseum, you refight the armor from Kingdom Hearts One, and the bottom screen is in Twilight or not Twilight Town is in Traverse Town. Traverse Town, and Sora's at the bottom fighting the the same Heartless, and when you move around as Roxas, Sora moves around the same way too. It's pretty cool. Oh, huh, that is cool. Yeah. yeah, they have they have a few moments like that, and those are probably some of the more cooler like system taking advantage of moments where you see Sora and Roxas, like Roxas is, is repeating things that Sora did. And for those brief seconds, you see Sora moving around in like a fuzzy memory hole, hole version. It was very cool. And I, that's the kind of things I, I think would be really elevated too if they like did an HD version, right? They make it like a Metal Gear or like a Nier thing where it just pops up on screen and it's weird. <laughs> I, I liked it. I mean, it was very like it would just happen every so often and just kind of throw me off a bit. Damn, that's so, kind of creepy, kind of cool. Yeah, I liked it personally. So I have one very small storyline issue with this game. I'm hoping Emmanuel sure. can can help me out with it. Oh, you're expecting too much of me. <laughs> Maybe, because I don't understand it either. So we have, there's like two scenes in this game, which is from the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, where you have two people walk on the beach, and it's, they're both ho- they're both cloaked, and it's Roxas, and you, you find out it's Roxas and it's Semnus. And Roxas says something along the lines of, like, I've been to see him, and Zem- Zemnus says it's Sora? Or he says, you look a lot like him, Sora. But we never see Roxas go, go see Sora? Go see Sora, yeah. It's always been so... That that scene has always been so weird to me. It doesn't because make sense, it, it right? is in Kingdom Hearts 2. And, and it's always like, well, when the hell did Roxas see Sora? Yeah, it ha- it pops up twice in this game, and I think he's referring that he sees him in his memories. It could be. Yeah. But, it's, it, but I don't know, because that's weird, that, because the way he that he him. says it, it's like, I've been to see him. Unless, well, okay, so, because I don't remember, in, it, it's, it's not voiced, right? Like, that scene is not, even in this version, it's not voiced? In this version, it's voiced. It's voiced? And, so their, you, hoods are, and their hoods are off. So you can actually, like, because I was always under the impression that the one who says... I've been to see him. He looks a lot like you. It's Semnus, the one who's saying, which right. is ref- referring or referencing the secret boss of Kingdom Hearts 1, then. I think you're right. It could be then swap. Yeah. I don't remember exactly. Yeah. I just know that that conversation did happen between those two. And, yes. their, hood, and their hoods are off, right? Yeah, because you're seeing it from Roxas's point of view when he's talking with Semnus already. Okay. All righty then. Yeah, it's wow. very confusing. Yeah, that that that's the only thing that I've been confused about this entire time. And then there's there's some stuff in three that we're we're gonna get to it when we get to it. But <laughs> next year or early next or early twenty twenty five. Hopefully next year. I'm hoping next year. Yeah, me too. So much to happen. Oh, you're we're we're gonna get in the birth by sleep, and you guys are gonna be like, I need to know what happens now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, let's just get through recoded first, then go back Gosh, to chain of memories again. I'll be just me and you, so that'll be easy just to do. Yeah, so you, t- you two will do that like very quickly, so we can get to the next one. Oh yeah, easy. I'll, I'll, it on, I'll just force myself to play through it again. So that is a fun game. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> I just not do the Rick and Morty. Oh, and then and then Twelve, Twelve somewhere's in there too. Yes, yeah. well, that's the of course. And then Dream Doc Distant, we keep forgetting exists. Mm. We, we Dream Drop not- Distant exists. I yeah, wish it didn't, but we'll, we'll, we 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 could like chain memories after Dream Drop Distance as a kind of like oh look back at all the fun things that we've already seen we've been through now the memories ah the chain <laughs> memories ah uh, got it memorized ah, ah <sighs> by that time I've heard it enough so <laughs> I was a little surprised in the DS when they had the actual like cut scene cut scenes that yeah had the voices that that surprised me I'm like oh you got this on the DS I have to actually turn the volume up now which I was playing mostly without any volume. <laughs> And they have the cuts. They have the cutscenes baked right into the, the the subtitles baked into the cutscenes. So even when they change the vocal line, it's uh whatever they translated it to is still there. I didn't um, have subtitles when when I saw the cutscenes. Sometimes interesting. I definitely did. I did too. But for I mean, the most part, they were accurate. But there was like one scene in particular where a few lines were. It was just they clearly redid it later. <laughs> Happens a lot. Yeah, no, I had I had to have the volume turn on or I couldn't I couldn't see what they're saying. And you also can't pause those, by the way. If you pause it, it just skips it. it Didn't you imagine, you imagine being like foot fetishist Jesse McCartney and being like, hey, we need <laughs> we, <laughs> we, <laughs> what did come from? Jesse McCartney is a foot fetish. Jesse McCartney, the the voice of Roxas. Hey, we don't wait, hey, hey, we don't kink shame around. Well, it's not yeah, kink shame. And, come on. And and he 
he like at, this is like after like when Kingdom Hearts three came out, he's like, hey, someone post someone said something about Naminé's feet, and he's like, oh yeah, good look at those grippers, and everyone's like, what the fuck, Jesse <laughs> McCartney? Okay, now that's strange. I mean, I have nothing wrong with calling them grippers. That, that just to me, that's the strange part. I'm like, just feet, just call them feet. Yeah, and it it's uh, but anyways, uh, you imagine being like a voice actor and being like, hey, we need to come in to like voice this like DS game, and just being like, you guys aren't on fucking three yet. No, now come voice these like three spinoffs real quick. Just don't worry about it. We're paying you. Just... I'm sure they were into it. Like, guy with, like, one song. Oh, I can't remember the song. Mm. Uh, who knows? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. What do you say, Dominic? Like, I'm sure they were excited just to see what more of what was happening and also have another job. Like, nah, that's true. Yeah, but I'm also, sure it just... was weird that. I mean, I know I was surprised they couldn't get to three. I I would be surprised like you guys you guys are having me voice another spinoff when you're making the third one. Uh, that's that's not important right now. Just voice this fucking this twink real quick and then we can get on with the next spinoff. Oh, your random <laughs> fact that you didn't ask for because he had the song "Beautiful Soul." I think that was his first song. It came out in 2004. I'm pretty sure at some random place I like Chabero Pizza or something. If he bought a large drink, they put the CD on top of the straw. Oh my god! But I got this. I had it was just that one single, and I had a CD of this back in the day. <laughs> There's your fun fact that nobody asked Jesus for, and maybe Christ. somewhere out there, someone when the hundred people are going to listen to this, or two hundred, they're going to be like, "Oh yeah, I I swear I had a CD that came from a fucking pizza place on the straw on the cup." I mean, if you mean you got a single from Jesse McCartney, formerly of Dream Street. Hey, can we get back to the game? <laughs> no, God, no. That's what people come here for. <laughs> no, they, I was they surprised am- to find out that uh, Recoded is the one that gets a movie version and two point five HD. Yes, it does. That's weird. Does yeah. Dream Drop Distance also get a movie version? No, no, Dream Drop Distance, they somehow managed to put the game fully on disc. And they're like, yeah. I think it, at first they were having issues putting it on the PS3, I think. And that's why whenever whenever they they put it, whenever the PS4 came out, they're like, oh, yeah, just yeah, the PS4 can handle it somehow. I think it has something to do with Unreal Engine 2 or 3 not working on PS4 or PS3. So huh. when I play it, I should play the PS4 version then? Well, you're only like, this. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. OK, so there's, there's a final mix of the Dream Drop. No, no, it's just. Uh, it's it's literally the same version. Yeah, it, the only difference is it worth playing a 3DS version? Uh not particularly, I don't think. You get the fun matter. You get the fun gimmicks from the 3DS version, like you know, playing it in 3D and the 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 mini games are on the bottom screen, I guess. There's no fun and, gimmicks with with any DS or 3DS. You can do the <laughs> like do the whole like stylus thing of like because there's like a Pokemon system in Dream Drop List and spoilers, I guess. And you can like pet the things whatever yeah, you, but you can also do it in the ps4 version with the touchpad i think yeah okay you can, you can touch the pokemon and then whenever you do their limit break you can pull them back on a little slingshot and launch them forward from the second screen to the top screen if you can <laughs> still you can still do that the ps4 version it's just you know it's just weird <laughs> okay i, I, I am it. curious about it it's a game that i don't hear much about and i i, I don't know how i feel but oh, another thing with this game i want to bring up is they i think they did a good job with the bosses you have a lot of like what they would call large heartless which are just enemies that they would recycle that were kind of that were like mini bosses then you had like the giant bosses and there was one in agrabah that really gave me a tough time because you had to knock back stuff at him but i think i was playing the game wrong too a bit at the time oh that one was cool oh, yeah boy. Because I just I was I didn't have block on, so that didn't help either. And I had a really hard. I almost died. I also didn't have the potions, or I wasn't completely familiar with some of the stuff in the game. I also never put the spells on the quick button where you could hold down L one and then press. I had to like go in the menu and select I the spells. Either. I also never blocked. I only did a couple times. There were a couple enemies where the the guys like you're gonna want to block, and it, it it worked. But yeah, it it's fine. Y'all didn't do that. You have to reset it every time you go to a new mission. I don't know why they thought that was a smart idea, but that's the way it is. So it's funny you never used it. Yeah. I think blocking was just inconvenient because it was it was on a button that other things were also on. So if you weren't standing completely still, you wouldn't be blocking. Yeah, yeah. or you'll be trying to do a combo and then you'll hit block and then he'll block and the combo will end. So that was also stupid. Yeah, I don't recommend it. <laughs> it was only <laughs> useful in very in certain situations. But again, this game had had a lot of variety and I like that, but I also like the fact that I never felt like in Chain of Memories. I felt like, okay, I don't have a certain card or I don't have this. So I can't because I was being an idiot and selling cards. So I couldn't right. play the game right. Where in this game, I never felt like the game pulled me and, and took away my ability to play the way I wanted to. Like, I, I always felt like, like I just against, kind of yeah. forced my way through it. Even against the hardest bosses, you know, you still had enough potions or spells or whatever. You had to maybe respec into it, but you were never w- left wanting or like no, and I, the game. I didn't have to respec and, until some of the final bosses. That's when it did it for me. But even then, like you still had what you needed. You just need yeah. to figure out 
how to use it. Mainly it was the combo. I had to make sure I had the right combo weapons. I mean, the, that coffin guy is just an asshole no matter what. Yeah. I also had an issue with the bird guy. <laughs> the bird <laughs> guy was pretty bad. Oh, yeah. You, you also missed a really goofy scene, Emmanuel. Oh, no. There's a scene where you go back to Neverland with Axel and you teach him how to fly. And oh, Axel, yeah. Axel's like, I can fly. And Roxas goes, you can fly. Yes. It's yeah. Like, they, okay. they 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 briefly touch upon that in the movie thing. But, you know, you don't actually see it in, in action. It's just like text over it. That's like and Roxas and Axel went to Neverland and Axel did not believe. So he didn't fly until Roxas told him to believe and he flew. And the Neverland stuff has a weird plot hole contradiction in that, like, you're only supposed to fly if you meet Tinkerbell, but sometimes Roxas can fly anyway, and sometimes he can't. Well, he has to, he has to get Pixie Dust from Tink. Yeah, and a yeah. couple times he doesn't Right, but not all missions necessarily have that. Yeah. Some of the I, missions you're just dropping in to find some Heartless or whatever. Nah. Hmm. I think almost every, I think maybe one mission you didn't do it, but for the most part, you're always, you had to fly, because this, this Neverland was really just a, a bunch of islands separated by water, and then you go on the ship, too, at one point. Yes. I, I think it's funny that every time you go back, it's just fucking Captain Hook blowing up the island. So there's less and less of it every time you go. <laughs> I didn't catch that. That makes sense. It does get less. I also was like, I was surprised they brought back Neverland, but I can't even remember what Neverland looked like in Kingdom Hearts 1. So it was just the boat. Oh, OK. And then the, and then the yeah. castle. Or the, yeah, not the uh, castle, the big clock. clock. Oh, yeah. And you fight that secret boss. I didn't bother with this. Time. The other okay. clock tower. The, ah, yeah, yes. The less important clock tower. Yes. And we'll never see neverland again maybe I, I you know i could be completely okay if i never saw neverland again or alice uh, in wonderland just the echo dominic earlier like when you mm. said we were never gonna see destiny islands again uh, <laughs> i don't remember birth by sleep enough i was joking we do see neverland again uh, wait did i thought that you were joking that you were no fantastic no it's in birth by sleep you fucking me all the lost boys god damn it okay of course you do yeah, of course it is. If, if, if we're not getting Alice in Wonderland again, that'd be great. If we're not getting Halloween Town again, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sick of Halloween Town so there's, much. There's I, no more Alice in Wonderland or Halloween Town. I we we get a we get a cooler version of Halloween Town, which is Monsters Inc., where they're all monsters, and that's really fun. Yes, yeah, that's not till three, three, right? Yeah, that's not till three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we get Tron again, though. So, I mean, that's cool. I mean, I know that Recoded and Birth by Sleep have to recycle some of the same levels. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't forget about, about Recoded. About God that. Damn it. Yeah, God damn it. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> Recoded is just the first game, essentially, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, except Tarzan. We're never well, getting Tarzan back ever again. Oh, because they can't. Because of the rights, right? Yeah. Because of the rights, yeah. But, yeah. Mm, I totally forgot about Recoded. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> My bad. Uh, You're oopsie. welcome. Hey, how Sigmar says it? Oopsie daisy. <laughs> I don't like Zigbar. Oh god! At damn least it, I some of Zygmar. the some of the worlds were different in this. Like you had, for example, I mean, like when you go to Agrabah, I mean, there's stuff that was different that you never did before. You go to like inside the mouth, and it's different than what you had. I mean, inside the where the, the genie was than it was in like Kingdom Hearts One. I mean, I mean it's, it's always you know, different from the wall. The games. I sure the hope. Cave. I sure hope you guys like Hercules. I'm sick of Hercules. Oh, well, uh, spoke oh too soon. No, I know. I mean, I know. I, I, yeah, I'm not surprised. Hercules is easy for him because it's just a fucking Colosseum half the time. Uh, it's, not, it's not in three. It's I mean, it wasn't in two much. either. Two, oh, yeah. Two's also have a, has a level. I mean, yeah, you do more, but I like, like when I like when they brought it forward in two and then pushed it back to Kingdom Hearts one again in this game. Well, it's a handheld game, so. And then they push it even further in, in Birth by Sleep. I, I, I love Birth by Sleep. Uh, the, the, the fucking hercules level because of a certain reference that i can't wait to see everyone's reaction to anyways okay. anyways uh, best version is in kingdom hearts 3 though yeah whatever <laughs> my my favorite thing about halloween town though is i made a scarecrow a roxas and they all made fun of him of how goofy he looks that was pretty funny that was pretty fun <laughs> that's the whole reward you get for the whole coffin fight is jack gets the inspiration to make a fucking scarecrow huh. they didn't use any worlds from two in this game but i guess that's because it hasn't happened yet Robert sound i mean uh 12. oh yeah well, Twilight Town was originally in Chain of Memories. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, you know what? That makes sense, too, actually, now that I think about it. What? Whenever you're in Chain of Memories, you go to Twilight Town, and Sora goes, I've never been here before. And they're like, but yeah, it, probably. But it feels so familiar. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because the Ruby of the Eight is still a, a Kingdom Hearts 1 game. It's included in the 1.5 HD. So that's how you know that Square Enix means it as a weird one-related game. Even though Recoded is a one related game that's in the 2.5 remix. I don't know how to square that away, but. No. I, I, 
I also don't understand why this I do game like never a... got remade because it. I feel like I mean, there's no, there's no. I thought there'd be touchscreen gimmicks. There's no touchscreen gimmicks. There's none of that crap. Like, why wasn't this game ported too? Like in a form. <sighs> Hell if I know. You know, like, this is yeah, not a like bad game. Easy. Like I thought this game was trash before I played it. I'm like, why does this? You know, and after I played, like it's it's sad that this game is locked to the DS because so many people will not experience it. Right, and the way people were talking about like loathing going to it, it made me feel like it was going to be some kind of like off putting like game design, like a life yeah. sim or like a Harvest Moon game or something. And it's not any of that. No, it's completely fine. I think the biggest issue, which I think is weird, is people were like, oh, we don't need a prequel game. We already know what happens in two. And you're and then you get to like all the major plot points in this. And you're like, oh, why did people skip this? This is actually important. Yeah, no, I mean, this this game added so much more in the story of just showing what's going on with Organization 13, uh, what they're up to, showing how, you know, they have their interaction with Riku even more so, like showing what Roxas went through and why Riku fought Roxas at that one point. Like this, this brings all that together. This is basically the Clone Wars. <laughs> like I said, after you know playing two, this is the game that I wanted. I wanted to know more about the organization. They were such a big part of two. They just kind of came in all suddenly. I would like that setup. I don't care necessarily about going back a thousand years, like in Birth by Sleep or whatever the fuck it does. But I'm sure it's, it'll have it's a case not for a, itself. It is not a thousand years in Birth by Sleep. Yeah, it, it it's a lot. It's a lot sooner than that. If, if it's you're, that's what you're hoping. way closer than than what you're than what you're all thinking. <laughs> ten months, then I don't know. Uh, there's a ten. It's not a month. Okay, ten that's years. Not that long, right? Fine. There's a way to tell, and the way you figure it out is actually quite shocking. God, I can't wait to play that game. I can't wait for it. Ever. I, cause, yeah, that's the one I've been looking forward to the most. I, I actually wanted to skip this game, go to birth by sleep, but you guys are like, no, we need to play this first. It, so, and I'm, it, I'm okay with. I wasn't okay with it. I'm okay with it now because this was a this was a hell of an experience. It, it's almost oh, yeah, as yeah. if it's almost as if birth by sleep is like three games. Is it supposed to be originally? No, it's three games. Birth by sleep, you play as three different people. So okay. that, people in the cover, all, right? Yeah, that that's very much like a one thing that I do have to warn. So like if if at some point I don't know if, if you have an official date for it yet. Mike, but like yeah i would i would probably I'll, i'm probably gonna start it like maybe like a month before we're supposed to because i i'm worried about how we're going on that game how long did it take you all to finish this game oh, 20 hours mm. i got to 30 mike i don't know but i can tell you in a few minutes because i think your count yeah. is around 20 something uh, it, it felt uh, like this game took a while but i mean there was some idle time maybe but like whenever i had to step away from the game and get back to other stuff I would always because I couldn't close it, but I could pause it. But there was no, there was no closing the DS. Let me see how. Worth my is. sleep. Final mix is supposed to be twenty five and a half hours, thirty seven with the extra stuff. The mm-hmm. original Birth by Sleep is a little bit longer, apparently. <laughs> what I, was this game? I feel like the first time that I beat Birth by Sleep, it took me forty five hours, I think. But that was this on the game. This game is supposed to take twenty six and a half hours, thirty four with the extra stuff. Well, that. That's probably right, because I, whenever y'all told me, I didn't know that either. Whenever y'all told me you could start skipping missions, I immediately started skipping missions. But that was like, I want to say I was legitimately at the halfway point of the game. Yeah, I mean, I did some in the beginning and later on I just stopped caring. Plus, there's some missions that you only unlock if you meet certain pre-requirement that you don't know about, like open all the chests on a certain mission and then talk to a certain organization member that's in the lobby on a certain. Day. Yeah, what? Yeah, they'll be like, <laughs> hey, can you go back and like, oh, can you go get the chests? from this mission or like i see you unlock 140 chests you need to unlock 145 come talk to me when you do what what the fuck yeah. i didn't know that god damn this game I mean, and then they reward you with a special mission that sykes will give you because if you notice the missions they do skip numbers i thought that was just me because i was skipping other missions too no they are secret missions yeah there's secret missions in this game too i'm gonna blow my head plus up. you can you can replay <laughs> missions right too like that's what the, the yes. hollow mission things were yeah. Okay. And that's when that's when you're supposed to be like maxing out all the stats and getting all the chests for those reasons. Oh, and my final thing was twenty four out twenty four hours and forty minutes at level forty seven. That's about right in line with where you're supposed to be. Yeah. So, I mean, it felt long, but I did beat this game in a week too. I was a bit impressed with Pretty that. Good. Like I I was nervous about this game and it like oh man, am I gonna beat this in time? But I fucking blew through this game. So I was worried I wasn't gonna beat it in time, but I did. I was also worried. It's okay. Uh, I'm gonna say, God, maybe like thirty hours with, including the final, uh, the final chapter in Bird by Sleep. 
for okay. that one. So interesting. If I'm playing on PS4, that'll be a little harder for me personally, just because I mean, that'll take the TV away from my wife. But other than that, yeah, yeah, I'll play it that way. Be prepared. Also, <laughs> I know I will. I we can bring it up in the in the tax group too. There is a recommended way to play the three characters in order. I want to say it's from left to right. I want to say it's Terra Aqua Ventus. I personally, I always leave Aqua for last because you just go directly into the final chapter. Yeah, the the, the, the prologue you play is Aqua. Epilogue? Prologue? No, you... Epilogue? Yeah, the epilogue you play is Aqua. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, the ep- yeah, the epilogue is Aqua if y'all want to do that, but I, I prefer Here, to play it in that order. Here's the deal of how I recommend it. Aqua is, like, the last for me because she's the hardest to... to, to pl- not to play as, but, like, each one of the characters is kind of a different difficulty as it is. So That's, I always leave Aqua for last because she see, she seems to be the hardest route. Like the hard, uh, the, okay. Is this like a is this like a fate extra difficulty selector? No, this is a, no, a ma- no, no. Th- this is a, a manual's a coward doesn't know how to use magic excuse. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> because in fate extra, you know, whether you choose archer, saver, or caster is basically deciding how difficult your game is going to be. No, the three characters play differently. Terra is your strength, Aqua is your magic user, and uh, Ventus is your dex. So yeah. it, yeah. Your dicks? Your dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Dexterity. Um, yeah. Uh, <sighs> personally, I just recommend Terra Ventus and then not, honestly. I don't know. Okay. So I'm hearing Terra first no matter what. Yeah. Yes. Terra first because he's like. Also, it's because Terra's like the slowest of the tree. So it's Terra's like. Terra's also one that looks like Zach, right? From uh, FF7. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. That's how I always saw him. But yeah, Ter- Terra's like. Way slower than the other two. So it's, I don't know, I never found him as fun to play as. So it's like, let's get rid of him first and then the other two. Well, it's like playing Nier Automata. You know, everyone likes playing as 2B, except when, you know, some people really hate playing as 2B. I don't like playing as 9S or 2A. Sure. You're speaking words and none of these words. I understand <laughs> I understand the words that are coming out of his mouth. Okay. But I understand the words that are coming out of his mouth. Okay, I haven't played Nier Automata or Nier for that matter, unfortunately. You should. Nier's I, great. I agree. I have not played Nier. I have platinum near automata i need to play near automata i haven't even bought it yet because it's never been in my what i want to spend on steam see mike I'm, you have the you have I the great rebuy it because the great pleasure I'm, of being I able to play both versions of near they never give it back to me because <laughs> you know the ps3 version the ps4 remake are technically two different games Maybe i much. have the 360 version of it and i might have the ps3 actually physical right uh, that's the only way you're going to get that version of the game the remake well, is a different protagonist that's called near yeah no i i I looked up a bunch about it before. Yeah. I just never gotten around to it yet. You yeah. don't have, we'll have to play both at some Mike? point. <laughs> what manual, history, Mike? Yeah, yeah, here's a history, I think. Because what I was... have a, I have a copy of Near. If you want, like, I can sell it to you for like, I don't know. I think I have a copy of each. Okay. Of the of the of the first Near for PS3 and 3 I just can't remember. Oh, okay. I could get up and look, but I don't want to get up and look. Damn it! I'm trying to sell. <laughs> <laughs> I might. Anyways. I mean, you have to pay shipping, and you are international. King of Hearts. I mean, it's. <laughs> for, I, I've said. Whatever. We can talk later. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> also, we haven't talked about the meaning of the title now. Or the meaning of the title. And how no, it's okay, actually... So break it down. And how the title is, I mean, this game to... takes place over 358 days that Roxas is in Order 1913. What is the two? Two characters. Two characters. Oh, okay. Because it's mm-hmm. Ro- Shion and Roxas? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. That makes See, perfect sense. It's not that stupid, guys. No, it's not. I mean, <laughs> it was a name that I have made fun of for years. Everybody but never play the game. Yeah, exactly. everyone does. Uh, even funnier enough, uh, what's 358 plus 7, Mike? I don't know. 365 days. A yep. year. Oh, okay. Uh, so God those last... The, the, the seven days that are missing are the seven that you played as Rock's tutorial. Too. Oh, in the summer. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> math, everybody. <laughs> I don't like math. Well, then there's the extra day that he spends between things, too. Because there is a 359th day. Oh, that's the first day of summer vacation. Yeah. Yeah. That's when he's already oh, he like, into that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's when he's so like it starts where Kingdom Hearts 2 starts, where he wakes up Shit, and opens right. the window and it's like day one. Where did I get these pajamas? <laughs> that's a good so the, the ending of this game, after he absorbs Xion, fights Riku with the two keyblades, which is he, the end. Then he wakes part. up in Traverse Town, right? Or Twilight Town, wherever the hell it is. He wakes he, up in the machine. Oh, yeah. He's the, in the fake the version, digital. right? Yes, in the digital okay. realm. He, he's in the so matrix. They took him hostage. Because he, he, was, he was trying to communicate with uh, Shion and Namine and stuff, kind of. 
because she almost communicating with them. And then she's gone, so I guess Roxas will have to do instead. Well, the the idea is that is that Roxas is by definite Sora's nobody, and technically, if they killed Sora's nobody, he probably wouldn't be able to be fully restored. So they need to make sure that Shion wouldn't become the re- the replacement for Roxas or Sora. Right, but at some point, Roxas gets into the simulator. Yeah, they 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 showed it in one of the scenes in Kingdom Hearts two, where they just kind of show them whenever a uh, re- ransom Riku ransom defeats ransom. yeah de- <laughs> defeat defeats Roxas, he just kind of shows up at the in Twilight Town. He throws Roxas in the computer in front of the computer, and they sap him away. Yep. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh, because the fight where you beat him in here, he gets beaten in the actual. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't like that final fight just because, like, because after you beat, you do like this four form fight of Shion, and then you got to fight Riku, and you don't re- they don't recharge any of my items, and I didn't really have any spells. I just had items, so I didn't have a whole lot of healing stuff. That I used up almost twenty high potions in that fight against Shion. <laughs> well, you can. A, I had a lot of fun in that last fight because it was it was mostly flashy and just kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it wasn't hard. Like, I I was war- I was nervous because I'm like, man, if I can't do this. I'm going to have to go back and respec, and I do not want to have to go through everything I just did. Also, fuck you, goddamn Emmanuel. That song makes me fucking sad. The other promise? Hmm. Yeah. I've been, since I've been really emotional lately, I have been listening to that song a lot. So. It's okay. We'll, we'll get to my emotional song next game. Right. Is there a new song, Not Sanctuary, anymore? No. <laughs> it, it's all, they're all remixes. And funny enough, the. Uh, I'll see if I can find the audio only version, but there there's a tropical mix of simple and clean that's used for uh, 0. Two, 2. yeah zero point two, and I think that's probably my favorite version of like a remix. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's really it's good. It's great. Okay, the music was fine in this game too. I mean, I even like I, at one point when I got to Halloween Town for the first time, I played it for my wife. I'm like, hey, what's this? <laughs> and of course, that's what's all this? I asked the question, <laughs> and <laughs> she could hear. You know, she could tell exactly what it was. Is, but you know, it was it was good music. I, I liked the. I thought they did a good job of putting it on the DS. Oh, I I need to send you guys yeah. a tech. I need to send you guys a tech talk too. By the way, there's like music clips of Utada Hikaru's music, and it's all just like complete gibberish. And it's like someone <laughs> wrote these. Someone wrote these songs for them, and they don't make sense. And I don't think they realize that. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so I mean, you. I'm trying to think of some of the stuff. I, I did like it. Like for a good half of the game, you do have partners a lot. I liked it when I had partners just yes. because they can heal you sometimes and they made the fights easier when they were there. Some of them did at least. Also, it makes sense. Yeah. I like it when you partner with Xion for that long time because she can't use the keyblade. So she just kind of comes with you and then they're like, we need you're supposed to be on your own missions. We need more heart. Oh, but. You talk about that. This this, this game, I, I probably wouldn't have made sense being a kid because that would have been when the game came out. But being an adult and working a nine to five job and being like, all right, Roxas, go out there and do your job and then go get a nice treat after work and then come back and go to sleep very much made me feel old. <laughs> I mean, that's what the working world is, unfortunately. Yeah. And he he's even like, do, is there even a point to this? The mm-hmm. point is to work, Roxas. Just do your goddamn job. <laughs> Well, it's starting to question everything. He's starting to come into himself and have a conscience, and that's the exciting part is the character development. Mm-hmm. Wow, Roxas really has like questioning what he's been doing. Oh my god, it's like it's meant to be the point of the game. The organization really a good organization? Not at all. They they just should we called... really be collecting all these hearts? No, they just called my best friend who is trans and it. I don't think I should be working here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, that, I didn't even think about it from that from that point of view, but that yeah, that that was that makes sense too. Like I, yeah. you know how they just they don't respect Shion at all, and it that also oh, yeah. goes it's... and it, it goes into the whole thing too, where technically if, if she's a replica of Sora, she's supposed to be a boy, but she wants to be a girl, so that's also kind of rarely fucked. And it's because it's the it's the Kyrie part of Sora, it's the exactly. the non binariness of Sora. Yeah, it, it, something. Roxas inside Sora's heart. So right now there's two kids in there technically. So because Roxas has memories of Shion. So as of right now, there are two kids inside Sora's heart. And Kyrie's there somewhere too. Kyrie was uh, in there somewhere. And she was, but no. Yeah, she no was. Longer. She's gone and, now. Yes. That heart is gone now. However. Shut the fuck <laughs> up, goddammit. I Emmanuel. won't say anything else. <laughs> I've got this keyblade right here. I got a keyblade over there. <laughs> Oh Apparently, man, this series. According to, according to this, there was supposed to be also Pinocchio World, but it uh, sure. got, got cut. Um, yeah, I'm guessing it got. Is that cut. a rights issue or? Apparently, Prob- it was just due to space. Oh, yeah, yeah, prob- yeah. We'll talk about 
that there there was supposed to be another world in Birth by Sleep 2 that they had to cut because of space and shit. So, you know, you know it, what it's, else? Yeah. You know what's coming back for Recoded? Pinocchio. Oh, yeah. Monstro stomach. Gummy looking fucking intestines. Oh, well, that's yeah. because isn't Recoded just essentially a retelling of the first game? <sighs> yeah, but, but this time but you, repl- you replace. Yeah, but this time you replace the word heart with data. <laughs> I'm not wrong. It, no, I know you're not, not wrong. I've looked up a little bit about it, and I'm I'm interested in Recoded though. So uh, I am. It looks interesting. Mm-hmm. How bad can it be? Oh, famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as confusing as the series is, I mean, it it is fun. Like, don't you? I got a double jump at some point in this game too. I know that, and I used that yeah. like constantly once I got that. And like the glide too. Yeah, the glide was good. I I finally had to equip it at a couple points because I needed it for some of the boss fights, just so I could stay away from pain. But then you also get like the Peter Pan glide, except you can't fly. But you also get that glide on top. It's just yeah. like an ability. You get a lot of cool that stuff. That was awesome. I mean, the panel stuff was just so much fun, as we talked about, and like really getting to respect your character and change it up for different fights and seeing all the organization thirteen members and like you. I mean, they feel so more important now. They after like if you if you just played one and two, they're really not important. But after playing Chain of Memories and this, which again, games I thought were spinoffs, they are not spinoffs. They are. Pay- part of the game of the, of the story yeah there, there's no such thing as a spinoff in this game and also all of these games are fucking sad so be prepared to be sad for fucking for you got sad for this be pre- be prepared to be very sad for birth I by sleep fortunately you know a couple things about birth by sleep <laughs> that i wish i didn't know that about about aqua so yeah no i'm yeah uh, i'm not gonna say i it. don't know that's a good thing it's okay i know a little fit. bit more than I, sh- I want to just because of random videos on youtube that i caught here and there so mm-hmm. you can you can text them to me i'll tell you if they're right or wrong or not Anyways, uh, Recoded is going to be probably sad. Dream Drop Distance is very sad, and I'm excited for that one as well, because uh, Sora straight up gets called a slur in that, and that's funny. And uh, 3 is just, you know, the saddest of them all. So. Oh, boy. 3. But I mean, most of 3 is, no, is, is happy, sad, right? happy, cheery, then the end, then goes. So what, Dominic? Only a memory can't be sad. It's a music game. Oh, that game's also very sad. I have not <laughs> played that one, so I cannot say, but it's kind of a recollection of things that happened, but also future things so um this is the last game in the series too right at this point at this point as of the time of this recording yes i mean i know we're supposed to get kingdom hearts 4 but that hasn't even been announced yet like a date or there anything there is no release date for that and i expect us to be done with the series before that happens me too yeah then we'll get to the other games in between we'll get to final fantasy 15 neil world ends with you i'm really excited for the other uh, ones with you that game really expands on this game I've always wanted to play it, and now that I have a way to play it on a 3DS, yes. I'm excited for the first time. Like well, I've never. One of you is between this and Chain of Memories. Oh, is it chronologically? It? Yes, no. it's 2007. As mm. as long as we play it before Dream Drop Distance, we're fine. Yes, that's okay. my, that's what I, I want. I'll leave that to you. Okay, I'll make it happen because I'm probably gonna work in. I, I I'm almost about to put Recode in January, but if we're doing Birth by Sleep in December, I don't know if we're gonna want to jump back in a, in a month later. So probably we'll Recode in like February, March. Yeah. But I need to I need to work these out fast so we can get them done. So because <laughs> yes. I I I, kinda, I do want to finish the series two in next year if we can, or at least get the three. Yeah, that's the the important one. Yeah, I, I mean, mean they're they're all in wait. They're all kind of important except for recoded. I mean, we could do three in its birth by sleep slot then, or as like the the end of next year, early twenty five. Yeah, I could, I could probably force it out. I mean, I I really got into the series. This game got me more into the series than I expected. Like, I didn't know I needed this information. I didn't know I needed a game of Roxas eating ice cream every single fucking day. And, like, I didn't know I needed that, but I needed it. Recoded. Hey, how many games do you see that are about the dissolution of friendships? It made me think, too. Because, I mean, I'm going to get... Like, throughout the time I've been doing this podcast, I've had friendships that have happened, and I have friendships that have fallen apart just due to the nature of life. But... You know, and it's something that I've, you know, just in, the, in the course that I've been doing this in almost five years, like, you know, it's something I, I made me think about, too, other people that have been on the show with me that I talk to every single day. And then, you know, we just kind of grew apart, you know, made me think about that, too. But what does oh, the yeah, win- like, go ahead. I was say, but what does the winner ice cream stick get you guys? It's never <laughs> answered in the series. <laughs> Nothing. But I mean, like, the beginning, maybe beginning the winner was the King friends Hearts we made too. along the way. <laughs> the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2 is really good at uh, capturing that end of summer feel. And I think this game is not as good as that, but it does capture that that uh, feeling of like, oh, these friends are not going to stay together. There's going to be something bad happening here. I mean, this game also, con- you know, the Mill Colony will work. 
Yeah. Every day yes. you wake up and do a mission. Do 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 do. Just another day. It, it, so. And if you if you want to get really dark about it, it's kind of like getting a best friend at work and then them quitting and then you never seeing them again and not remembering them. That's and, completely fair. There's yeah. a guy on Facebook I used to be friends with that I work with that he deactivated his Facebook. I don't have his number anymore, and I, there's no way to contact him. He just disappeared. I'm like, that kind of sucks. Have you checked X? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. But I don't. He didn't have. He probably just completely went off social media. Like a lot, like a lot of people. He got into a relationship. He had a girlfriend, and then they must have broke up because he disappeared off Facebook. And that's normally what happens. People get in a relationship, they break up, and they disappeared off the internet for a while. He never that, came back. That happened. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't disappear. I wouldn't disappear off the internet. I never did. But I can't disappear off the internet now. There's over 500 times my voice on the internet now, so hey, you can't disappear. Any other things you want to say about Kingdom Hearts that we missed? Instead of me ranting? Mm, I don't know. I think that this is the best trio out of them all. Like, in the next game, we're going to meet another trio. And, you know, we already have the Destiny trio, which is Sora, Riku, and Kairi. Yes, we... And this is referred to as the Seasol trio. Damn, you beat me <laughs> to it. I, I now am sad, just like Emmanuel was a, a year ago or so, when he that when McDonald's in Thailand had that special ice cream, the sea salt ice cream, and we that didn't was get not it a here. year ago. Like, <laughs> was it that a year was ago? like that was a few months ago. It, oh, yeah, wow. only, like two months ago. <laughs> yeah, I, thought they, that, I thought it was longer than that. Damn. No. But no, I really want it now, and I'm like, God damn it, that sucks. You can make it at home yourself as long as you get like an ice cream machine. That's not the same. I don't want to make it myself. I want to buy exactly. it in a store. I want someone else to make it, and I pay the money. <laughs> <laughs> I want my Mooney with uh, you. <laughs> also, they don't have any. Did they ever say how they buy it? I guess they do make Mooney when they kill things, so they have money. I don't. I don't know. Did you say Mooney? How, how, Isn't it Mooney? They even gave you for the job. Like, <laughs> oh, this game. Oh, one thing I do got to say: this game did make the fat guys that you fight the fat heartless even more annoying than they were even in Kingdom Hearts One and Two. Oh, they they can't be more annoying than in Chain of Memory. They were pretty fucking annoying because you had to like hit him in the head to make him fall down. Eventually, they actually do real damage to them. Oh, for the love of so fuck that! You can hit him in the head from behind, I think. I think, or you can cast spells, and that's what I did. Like whenever they would be as a boss fight, I would just bring a, th- a lot of thunder spells, and you can knock them down with thunder spells. All right, Donald. Thunder. <laughs> you know what? Wow. Donald in this game, by the way, didn't at all. I mean, again, they are frozen in carbonite. Oh yeah, because they're locked in in the castle with Sora at this point, right? To regain their memories. In in Twilight Town. In the basement. (laughs) That's not creepy at all. (laughs) They are frozen in the basement. I mean, that's Uh, the start of Kingdom Hearts 2. You've played it. (laughs) Yeah, I recorded about it. I just don't remember it. Oh, another thing we have to mention that I kind of went went over. Chain of Memories, they go into the pods. Yeah. I play too many games. I can't. You know, Chain of Memories, where the game starts off with Sora looking out in the distance on a big X pathway. Which way do I go? So are we saying that's what inspired Elon Musk to make to want to name the thing? (laughs) He was a big fan of Kingdom Hearts. He's like, man, X is so cool. What a cool ass letter. Oh, I want to be an Organization 13 member. He he does have an Organization member name, if anyone doesn't need to know that. Oh, no. Like, I mean, we all do, technically, if if you use Google. It's an anagram. Yeah, but that he he's very much a fucking loser. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, please. Do yeah, I don't do with that part, but yeah, yes, yes, he is. Who this <laughs> fucking gays my mom found now now banned on fucking X. You know, hey, for the funny thing is, oh, when yeah. I post stuff on X or Twitter, I have a, issues a lot of time where it won't let me post. <laughs> so either he is a fan mm. of gays my mom found, or heard me talk shit about him, but I I can't post sometimes. It just won't let me post. Like even just like. Where I copy and paste the stuff, like, oh, this episode's up. It, or if I'm like, oh, the new episodes are coming, I'll post three images. It will not let me post it. Uh, well, sometimes. Huh. So I got nothing. But it, it, it wasn't like that before he took over. I can say that. I had no issues with, with Twitter at all until he took over, which I thought, who cares? The CEO takes over a company. Would, what? I mean, nothing ever changes. And they fucking fucked up that social media platform so bad since he's been in charge. Yeah. <laughs> I can't disagree. So. All right, should I go? Should we go on to questions, comments, or memories? Sure, sure. Because I'm sure we'll bring some other stuff. We'll come up in there. I actually got a lot. I got more nice. Okay, so I posted in two different groups. I posted in a few groups, but they didn't approve my message. I don't think. But <laughs> or I didn't save them. One or the other. So if you did, if you did post in one of the groups and I did not catch it, well, I am sorry because they must have not proved it fast enough. Uh, first, from the Kingdom Hearts community, uh, from Matthew Sorrell. I played this game so much and still have it. I've been wanting to play it again. You should, sir. You should. It's a good game. From Colton Michael Hogg, it was ported, wasn't it? I thought it played pretty recently, but either way, great game. Just because it never been ported. And from Nathan Bart, amazing game. All right. 
from Joseph Stipan. This game was amazing. I was so excited to play a 3D Kingdom Hearts game on the go. I was excited to learn more about Roxas, and this game came out on my birthday, 929. That's cool. Nice. All right, here's another good one. Uh, from Devin Troy Getty Taliki. This game is possibly the most slept-on Kingdom Hearts game to date. A compelling story fused with a very simple mission-style gameplay loop. Key moments in this game point to great story-building moments connecting Zigbar to Bragg. What? And how we view <laughs> Zeon. And <laughs> Axel's love for his friends okay. and connections to them showing how strong Leah's heart truly was. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> we should. We, you know, that's funny. I know I read spoilers, but they mean spoilers. absolutely nothing to me, and I love we, that. We cool. should really start posting on those and not post spoilers. I mean, it doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Don't worry, it will. I know it will, but it like by the time it does, mm. I won't even remember that I read this comment. I know, I know. So Just don't think I about know. it. Move on to the next. Oh, and you said not to mention the best multiplayer in the Kingdom Hearts game, allowing you to play as all 14 members of the organization, as well as Mickey, Riku, Sora, Goofy, and Donald. Oh, I forgot. Which we had not talked about. In the, you, can, you can unlock Sora in this game if you do all the missions and all the extra stuff in each mission and fully, fully beat this game. Really? Look that. I looked at some of those requirements. Mm-hmm. That looked awful. Yeah, it oh, does. I, I have something funny to tell you real quick. Just Please. talking about that. Uh, so you know how you have you can equip gear? Yeah. You know how one thing we we glanced over because I'm pretty sure none of us did it. You can do the the VR missions or whatever, and that you can mean. yeah you can unlock points to get stuff too as well. One of the things odd, you, but... one of the things you can get is something called odd gear, and it changes the shape of the weapons of everyone to goofy weapons. So Roxas and Shion hold a stick. I think like one of them has like an umbrella. I think one of them has like a big fish. It's just like just goofy weapons. It, I completely forgot about that too. Talking about that made me remember it okay from joe quintala because the game isn't bad it's how you play damn puzzle pieces and the story is honestly super boring okay what uh, from i mean hey you still don't. from kendall mata i love this game so much the story was great and sad at the same time the game playing was fun and it looked really good for a ds game i still play it from time to time and also love the fact that you could play as other characters right here i like this from johnny whitfield I've always been rather diehard Kingdom Hearts fan, and this has always been my favorite type of Kingdom Hearts 2 because the story is just so amazing. To where Enix, we need a remake, please. They don't care. They do not. They don't want our money. Hey, you know, if they want to do something before Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out, this would be a great thing to kind of just put out there. Yeah. Yeah. But this is uh, coded as its own uh, HD collection. From Savannah, Berlin. Game is fucking hard as hell. Okay. Have a I movie can... of back cover or something like that, too. Boy, they need another back cover movie, actually, <laughs> for. <laughs> oh jesus okay here's who i i can't i'm not oh i now i get it okay from Chris, christopher rogers to be honest i find this game more enjoyable gameplay wise than chain of memories i think chain of memories should have been cut scenes only in the collection instead the Thank story you. the story Thank 358 you. is by far is by far probably my favorite but the gameplay gets a bit stale we like card games right dominic <laughs> I do, yeah. I'm a uh, well, yeah, as Marvel right. Snap has taught me, and my and unfortunately took my money. I have learned that I am a sucker for card games. So yeah, because every month they get my ten dollars, and they've been getting more money out of me too. So ah, fucking Marvel. I'm a. That's why I stay away from card games now. Like I'm, I'm too much of a sucker for them. All right, from the Grave Mine, the game is a masterpiece. Considering what it's running on, I think it's supposed to feel like work. That way, when you get the moments of Roxas, Axel, and, and Xion, you really appreciate the moments because you're off of work and you only have so much free time. This game totally deserves the same port status that Final, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core got, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Here's one from Silas Toma. Easily the best in the series story-wise, and the fact they got the Kingdom Hearts combat working as well as it did on the DS was remarkable. Unfortunately, yeah. limitation did strike it gameplay-wise with some of the worst boss designs in the series. If any game in the series deserves a remake, it's this one. Desperately, desperately want to see it to live with the potential it deserved, and fuck you, Leechgrave. That's the coffin boss I've been bitching about for days. All right. From Ben Daniels, the first Kingdom Hearts game I ever played, it changed my life. That's cool. That also has been weird being the first game you play in that Good series. God, this must have been weird as shit. I mean, if you look at it quickly on the shelf, it does say Kingdom Hearts 3 on it. <laughs> yeah, if oh, you squint yeah. and, and close your other eye. <laughs> uh, from Jason Runstorm, love this game so much, love the inventory. Okay, from Milo Kobashi. It's a great bridge between Kingdom Hearts, Chain of Memories, and 2, but absolutely fuck Leechgrave. I never finish it because of that fight. <laughs> I get it, man. I get it. That's funny. There are a lot of comments in this. Um, let's see. From Sophia Rodriguez, the level and mission design was rough. Yeah. All right, from Brian Gunderson. Worst game in Kingdom Hearts series, in my opinion. Gameplay-wise, I still enjoyed it, so Kingdom Hearts has no truly bad games, in my opinion, but I wouldn't replay it. Have That's they fun. not played Chain of Memories? <laughs> 
Right, from Juliana Davis, would buy instantly if it was ported. Storyline, 10,000 over 10. <laughs> I, I get it. I and mean, last, I'm going to read from this group from Christian Dahl. Pretty upset it never got the retreatment Chain of Memories did. It's a fantastic game with a really compelling story. Not 100% tied to the main series. Right. And then from the I watched the entire Overload re- Super Replay group. I got a decent amount of questions, comments, too. Damn. Uh, from Jeremy Brown. Love this game. From Andrew Burns. I bought a physical copy and played it through a few years ago. It's super impressive for a DS game. And the story is excellent, but the combat does get old due to repetition. Definitely an essential story for the series at the very least, but I do get why they haven't bothered porting it. No, I do not get why they haven't bothered porting it. I mean, I had thought that it was going to be very touchscreen gimmicky, and that's why it never got ported. Yeah, I thought the same thing. But it's not. There were no touchscreen gimmicks at all in this game. Not one. Yeah. Once you you put the camera on the shoulder buttons, you don't even need to touch the screen at all very much. Mm-hmm. No, it's just there's oh. a map, and I don't need a map. I mean, it was nice, sure, but I don't need it. You could have yeah. put it like Grand Theft Auto 3 does, you know, put yeah. it on the screen. Exactly, e- just put it in the corner. It's even weirder because technically they still have all the models because all these characters are either in Reach and Memories or Kingdom Hearts 2. The only one that wouldn't technically be are some of the new bosses and then Final Fight, and I guess technically Xion's a model, but Xion's just a black-haired Kyrie. so... I mean, did this game hard. not sell well? It didn't sell well. Okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah, but I don't think that Re Chain of Memories sold well either. So I think Chain of Memories sold well. Oh, Chain of Memories, yes, but Re Chain, like Re Re Chain of Memories, I don't think so. Also, I feel like and I know it's stupid because we 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 talked about it through much. This a lot of people don't. I guess a lot of people don't didn't follow the story, so no one really complained about how important it was because technically Chain of Memories is really important. Oh God, yes. Yeah, so I guess. Because a lot of people didn't play it, no one really complained that it needed to be ported because no one knew the story was important. So that's why we never got the same thing either. Yeah, I guess that. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, Chain of Memories is essentially, in my opinion, Kingdom Hearts 1.5. Also, if, if we if we want to work in the details, technically the divided by two days also makes sense because there's two screens on here. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like Castlevania also, Dawn of Sorrow because so, dual screen. Yeah. Worth noting that the game has sold over a million copies, so it should be successful, hopefully. I mean, Square is also the one that got upset with Rise of Tomb Raider. It didn't, didn't sell enough when it sold exactly. like millions of copies. I mean, so. they said Final Fantasy 16 hasn't sold enough. Yeah, they're fucking idiots. Yeah. Wow, really? Space Phoenix is a... When you set your expectations so damn high, you don't make it. So, mm-hmm. yep. and from... I'm just going to read a few more. Uh, from Adrian Blair, all Kingdom Heart game titles make sense once you play them. I like this one. I think it has mm-hmm. very fond memories of it. Because I played the multiplayer a bunch, my only complaint is I feel like the missions could have been broken up into different worlds a little better. I've already spent so much time in Twilight Town because of Kingdom Hearts 2, I really didn't need to spend a bunch more in this game. Yeah. From Autumn Sevier, I, re- I recall starting it after I got a DS and a flash cart never really clicked with me, so I put it down not too far into the start. It takes a bit to get into this game. I have to, I will say that. It took me a little while to really get absorbed into this game where I couldn't stop playing it. And from friend of the show, Star Myers, this game is amazing and gets way more hate than it should mostly because so few people actually got a chance to play it. I wish there was a port so I could experience, see all the content for this game, not just the cutscenes. Yep. I saw okay. I agreed. Here's a good one. From John Abbott. This game gaslit me into thinking there were 358 days in a year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from Jesse Whitley. I'm pissed as a DS only. I miss playing it. I kill for it to be ported to the Switch. I thought yeah. nothing to say, Emmanuel. You can't right. port. Put it on Switch. Can't. Put it on the Switch. That's no. all I was trying to get. It used to be a thing, I remember. Didn't you have like a shirt for it too at one point? I still have okay. it. It's, <laughs> it's very faded at this point. But uh, From Jeff Flynn, the general assumption is that it never got ported because it's too reliant on touch controls in the second screen. They have to do a pretty massive o- overhaul to port it over. As far as it being mentioned, it's a favorite among the Kingdom Hearts fan community. This and Birth by Sleep are generally regarded as the two best stories in the franchise. And people lost their damn minds when Kingdom Hearts 3 events of this game finally paid off in a satisfying way. Yep. Goddamn guys quit spoiling the fucking goddamn game. <laughs> well, people probably figured yeah, that by this time I played more goes. than what I have. They're not spoiling it, technically. They're just saying what we've already mentioned like three yeah. times at this point, that Kingdom Hearts 3 pays it off. <laughs> oh, and I think this would be the whole, I, yeah, I'm going to last one. Uh, from Cat Monette, definitely the most tragic entry in Kingdom Hearts and the one that had me bawling at the end. Kingdom Hearts 3 definitely paid off everything introduced in this game in spades. Damn. Also, the multiplayer was really fun. I don't know. I mean, it's a tough competition between this and Birth Sleep is the most tragic. <laughs> well, no, I, I get it. it. It's it's every Kingdom Hearts game, like I said earlier, every Kingdom Hearts game is just fucking sad. Like, it just, just tug, knows how to tug you in the right way. Yeah, these, these two, it, it's like, it, it's a 
battle between the, the, these two. Like, of which one is the, the most tragic one? It's okay. like, I could go either way, honestly. It's okay. The gayest is Dream Drop Distance. I also can't wait to see that one. Jesus. Dream Drop I've heard you guys bitch a lot about Dream Drop Distance, though, I feel. <sighs> nah, there's, there's a big reason for it. For um, I could tell you why. It's not a spoiler. Uh, you play as Riku and Sora, but there's a timer, so you can only play so much as Sora and Riku. I honestly don't even mind that uh, the gameplay thing. I I mostly gripe about Dream Drop because of what happens in the goddamn game, and it's mostly at the end. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fair. You talk, well, yeah, don't. Okay. Also, I do think <laughs> no, that they did, I do think that they did overhaul the time thing in the PS4 version. Oh, I could yeah. be wrong, so. Like, you can maybe use it a little bit. Like, you can play as each character a little bit more before doing the drop. Don't worry. You guys will get it while we get there, which is not soon. <laughs> You'll forget all about Sometime it. Sometime next year. You will not commit this to memory. No, I I mean, the amount of fucking games I play for this show and the episodes I make, man, stuff goes in and out. The one goes in the brain and is out the brain by the time I get there again. So. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of nice in one part because then I get to experience stuff for like you know the first time because I don't remember shit. But I don't, I got nothing. I love it, so I'll just say that. Mm. All right, and before we go on to shelf stacker box, I want to give away a code because I didn't do that the last week or two weeks. I keep forgetting, and I have too many damn codes. I keep buying games, so I keep getting more codes. You know, that's an issue too. So let's see here. We're gonna give away X Morph Defense Complete Pack. No idea what that is, by the way, guys. So, mm. all right. <laughs> and the code is O Q nine C Q E I C four W F V V M eight. And that might be a zero and not an O at the beginning. That's a zero at the beginning. So please, if it didn't work, put in a zero instead. And that, Which, that is your uh, code. platform is this? Steam. I should have said that. Steam. This is a Steam code. Steam. Steam, because I couldn't remember to say it the first time. Uh, Xmorph Defense Complete Pack. I have no idea what the hell this is. You're welcome, whoever grabs it. <laughs> and, yeah, because people do grab the codes. And people had and people messaged me and said, hey, thanks for the code. I'm like, I'm glad you got it. Or I had one guy who, he it didn't work because I just typed it in wrong. He asked me, and I went and searched it and sent it to him. So, I, I mean, again, I want people to enjoy these codes. I can't use them. That's why I'm posting them. <laughs> so, all right, let's go on to Shelf Stacker Box. And Emmanuel, why don't you go first? Oh. Why? Because I'm the only one that didn't play it? <laughs> Why? I mean, you you experienced the game the way that many people would, so it's fine. I mean... You didn't I, miss much. Uh, technically, I can't... My rating would be, like, port it! Put it on something else! Other than That's the, fine! Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, just for the story, because I actually... Yeah, I mean, the story's like, fine. That's what I mean. Played, played, like, more than an hour and a half of it, so I cannot, like, comment on, uh, on the actual game itself. Uh, I, you know, I've already forgotten, Mike. <laughs> what was it? Shelf, box. Box. Uh, shelf, shelf box. for the story. Okay. The game, game, uh, game itself. I have no idea. <laughs> it's uh, it, again. It is just a really good essential part of the Kingdom Hearts lore. Like Roxas is a fan favorite character for a reason. Axel is my boy for a reason. <laughs> Shion is also like a great addition, even if it, if if just for this part of the story. And again, it just it pays off so well in Kingdom Hearts Three that then when you look back at this game, you're like, wow, this this one is just like really really good this, uh, in terms of the story. And I, I and I can relate to Roxas. I feel like a zombie <laughs> at times. Okay. And all that, so uh, yeah, I I really really like the, this the the story here. So yeah, it's a it's a show for me at least in in terms of that. Okay, and a ported new ranking ported. <laughs> Put it on the switch. Put it on the switch. I just want it on Steam. I just I I just want the Kingdom Hearts collection to be on Steam and not on locked on Epic. <laughs> well, that's a personal opinion. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Dominic? I'll probably say put it on the stack. I want to keep okay. it around, but I don't want to necessarily be like, hey, this is one of the best DS games ever. Because it's pretty good, but it's not, you know. If I was playing this when I was playing Prime DS stuff, this would have been like system defining for me. It just would have been a cool title to get through. Okay. Yeah, I'll go next. Uh, for me, I'm going to put this on the shelf. I really had a good time with it. I really enjoyed the story, but I also really enjoyed the gameplay way more than I had any anticipation to. I was just blown away by it, and it honestly surprised me. So I was surprised how much fun I had with this game because I, I didn't ex- I didn't come into it expecting to have a great time, but I left having an amazing time. So it, for that, it's going. I agree with that actually. 
but not the South Park. <laughs> and what about you, Joe? I 100% agree with uh, Dominic. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the stack. The, the gameplay gets a little repetitive, and I feel like a lot of the later endgame bosses, the ones we very specifically complain about, really start to like kind of push away from you enjoying the game. But I do like a lot of this game. I do love the story, and I do think the, the final boss fight is probably one of what I always preach, which is have your final boss fights be at least four stages. This is exactly four stages, and I loved it. But I also feel like you could get the story from this, from like just watching a YouTube video. It is important you should watch it, but also if you don't own a DS, it's kind of whatever. Just do that. And I also agree they should port it. Yeah, I mean, now that I know that there's no yes. touchscreen gimmicks for anyone that's curious, play it on, you know, you can play it on your PC, play it on your Steam Deck. I mean, like this is something that there are no, t- you don't need the touchscreen, so it doesn't matter if you play it in a different way. I mean, you will need a dual screen one. process, but not the touch screen. Yeah, I mean, and hell, the video I was watching that in the review, the guy played on a Steam Deck. Well, what what's even weirder is you you can uh, what is it? They they ported Dream Drop Distance, like that game, mm-hmm. and that game uses the the bottom screen. A lot of the yeah. gimmicks come from like the you know doing goofy shit with your teammates come from the bottom screen. So it's weird that they were able to port that, but they couldn't port this. My guess is that sold better. Yeah, I don't remember. I want to say it did. Yeah. So, I mean, that I mean, that plays such a big part. I mean, whatever sells is what they're going to do. I get it. But I feel like there's enough Kingdom Hearts stuff that I mean, you port almost everything else. Why not? Why didn't port this game, too? I think that the reason Keep why the they did port Dream Drop Distance was because of what happened with the development of Kingdom Hearts 3, because they had to switch engines it mid uh, mid uh, development of the game. And by that time, they were like, OK, People are probably expecting another Kingdom Hearts game. We should probably just like port this one on the on the 3DS and port it over to PS4 and whatnot. I think that that might have have might might have had something to do. Okay. I mean, yeah, three took forever. I mean, that's I just can't get over like, yeah. the yes. fact that the series but, is so important. Just can't get over that. Uh, it's I would love that the collection that is this Chain of Memories Pixel Edition and coded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Coded's on is on the PS4, isn't it? One of those it's, collections. It's also a, 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 a movie, like the movie thing, like this. It's a movie at two point five. Yeah, but you can also play the whole game too, right? No, no. Oh, they oh they didn't bring back a game. No, they. So what they did was Kingdom Hearts HD one point five is you can play Kingdom Hearts one and and Rechain of Memories and have the three five eight movie, and in HD two point five you can play Kingdom Hearts two and Birth by Sleep and have the recoded movie. Okay. That, yeah. that kind of bugged me out. I thought, log, get, uh, I thought for sure Recoda got ported. No. Uh, and then, to, yeah, HD 2.8 has Dream Drop 0.2, Birth by Sleep, and the Union Cross, uh, the movie. backstory movie. Oh, we have three movies to watch, actually. Okay. <laughs> we, 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 we have uh, Kingdom Hearts chain which is the original one which has the whole story we have the new one that takes place with it's a combination of that and the new mobile game they made and then we have kingdom hearts dark road which is a backstory of someone very important that we haven't met yet but that so, one came out after kingdom hearts 3 so that yeah so that that won't be done until way after kingdom hearts 3 at least so god this you know when i started the series i mean I, I, my god what did <laughs> I, what was i get myself into <laughs> And <laughs> we're here. Um, I have love. I'm loving it though. So there is that. Like okay, I want. I have a question for Emmanuel and Joseph. No, no. Realistically, <laughs> how much? How much of the spectrum of Kingdom Hearts have we seen? <laughs> I want to say we hit the halfway point. Uh, like if I, if you were to like graph out like okay, you know, if you've seen Kingdom Hearts one, you've seen like five percent of what Kingdom Hearts is. If you've played the first three games, you've seen fifteen percent. Of what it is, and then like you get it, the the line gets eventually <sighs> bigger as you go, right? It's like, have we seen really fifty percent of like everything that's going on, or is there just so much shit still hidden? There is so much shit still hidden, and it, and it's and it's mostly because of those fucking mobile games. Yeah, the mobile games are really fucking up storyline wise. If, 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 if it did, if it weren't for those mobile games, it we would be like at fifty or seventy five percent. With the mobile games, I'd say twenty five percent. If if I can explain probably the easiest way that I can think of, don't look at a percentage of Kingdom Hearts because uh, technically they did confirm that uh, Kingdom Hearts Four is going to be part of a new trilogy. The main point that right. we want. I want to look at is we are we we are in the middle of the main series, which is Kingdom Hearts 
one chain of memories to technically 358 and then dream drop distance recoded and then three we're about to oh, enter the sleeve oh and breath no 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 i'm getting there so oh, then, oh then, okay yeah, i know what you're you know what i'm going at there is technically a prequel series which is the prequel to what is going what is technically part of the mainline kingdom Hearts series but a lot of its backstory to where i can say that it's considered part of that which is going to be the two movies and then birth by sleep and then 0.2 and those are four different things in itself uh the mobile games aren't that big of a deal they are but you can (laughs) i say they're not a big deal because you can watch them and be like okay that's perfectly fine but that's essentially where i'm getting at three does wrap up everything completely so but i also while saying that there's a lot of stuff from the mobile games that has not been answered like at all Uh, probably not okay it will it's it's complicated that's all i can say it definitely sounds like it like again if it didn't have the mobile games in in this like this would just be kind of smooth sailing even with all everybody's complaints about it being convoluted is everyone done show second box what 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 yeah has everyone done shows yeah we're all done yeah yeah Yeah. Yes, we are. All right. I decided to run away, so we just keep going. <laughs> and I ran. I ran so, <laughs> so far, far away. I'm also second, been drinking too. So second week too. that that we've <laughs> that we've referenced that song. I think. <laughs> uh, God damn it! Telling you. Oh, and I should see what we're talking about next week before I wrap up this episode. So, uh, okay. Next week, you can hear me talk about Mega Man X Six for the first time. Ugh. <laughs> I'm almost done with the game. I haven't beat it yet, but I'm I'm almost done. Is that the one where you don't play as X anymore, but you play as a uh, no, 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 that's no, 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 no. seven or eight. That's seven. Okay, okay. Seven is the really bad one, from what I've heard. It is. Six is fine. Oh, okay, uh, I'll say six is like the start of the decline, and seven is just the garbage dump. Wait, if you're still playing fine. six. Have you finished Phoenix Rising? No. But Phoenix Rising is the week after, and I, I'm, I'm mid, I'm, I'm getting there through Phoenix. So I mean, X Six is not gonna take him that long to finish now. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm at the, I'm in the Wily stages right now, and I have everything. So I'm just gonna go beat the game. Good. I'm just gonna say Ninja Power. Oh, I have that too. Yes. <laughs> You're gonna need it. I just don't have the ultimate armor because I didn't do the the L, the code. You have to do a fucking code to get the ultimate armor in that game, which I will bitch about next week. Yeah. <laughs> Which you can only do I think, when you start the game. So I can't go back and get it now just for the hell of it. Mm-hmm. Which kind of irritates me because then the game is probably like just, you know, you, you just hit a button and, it, and it's press A to win at that point, I think. Like literally just jump up and press A to win because you just do it an attack where you fly across the screen and kill everything. Yeah, the Nova Strike. Yeah. <laughs> so press A to win. <laughs> All right. So you can listen to us talk about that next week. And Dominic, where people find you at? You can find me on the Distant Ways podcast on YouTube or on Twitter or X at Distant Waves. We, I think we have a blue sky now. I know we have a website, Distant Waves Out Space. Uh, um, that's, you know, I'm also on the Overboard Facebook group, you know, as usual. And Emmanuel. Well, you can sometimes maybe find me over on twitch.tv slash Commander Lionheart and also on youtube.com slash Commander Lionheart. Probably maybe new reactions at some point will drop. And sometimes maybe at some point I will stream again. Everyone needs a break sometime. I streamed this week. The, I know. I was happy. I was glad to see and when it was the game for the show. It also made me happy, too. Yeah, that's the only reason why I streamed. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I still think you should play through this entire game. Uh, yeah, well, if they put it on the Switch, maybe I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, run on the PS4 and give you a platinum trophy for it? <laughs> uh, I don't. I only have the platinum to one, two, and three. Uh, not the spin-off games. I'm surprised. It's the, the Birth by Sleep specifically is hella hard. Uh, okay. to, get the, to get the platinum, and uh, you know how much I hate Chain of Memories. No, I do. I've heard about it. <laughs> <laughs> have I told you about it, Mike? Yes, yes, you have. Uh, so, if you want to hear more Kingdom Hearts, we have done Kingdom Hearts one, two, Chain of Memories. All those episodes are on Podbean. We have over five hundred episodes on Podbean. We do movies, comics, TV shows, top tens, whatever I convince people to talk about with me. So you can find our entire catalog there. Just type in anything you want and see if we did it. You never know. Because I do some, we do some weird shit in the show that people convince me to do. So you never know. Shout out to that Saint Sword mini we did. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was a cool Genesis game, by the way. I, I do a lot of strange games too. Okay, funny. Just never know. You never know what I'm gonna do because I don't even know what I'm gonna do at the damn time. So definitely go check out our giant catalog on there. Uh, if you want to support the show, we do a pa- we have a Patreon. You can vote. You can vote e- each month. We have a different poll. Right now, it's horror movies that Mike has never seen. And I don't remember what they are, and I don't want to pull it up, but there's some horror movies. Go vote. Little Dogs is your Patreon poll. And 
we also have a Discord. Please join our Discord. You see the link in the show notes. I have updated if you tried in the past, so now it should be a good link that works. If it doesn't work, tell me. I will get you a, a good one. Just message me on Facebook, Twitter, Threads, wherever you want to. I will I will look at it and I will respond if that's the question. If the question is, hey, you want to you want to you want to do this and some other random crap? No, I will not respond to you. But if it's hey, I need your Discord link, I will respond. So definitely good that. Also, we have a shot of my awesome intro and outro crazy Elena at Hell Hastry. You can follow her on TikTok. And also want to give a shout out to my buddy Bill Tucker to the MCU movies with me. He started his own podcast, A Gamer Looks at 40. Definitely go check him out also. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Threads. And YouTube or audio only. But hey, if you want to get your podcast on YouTube, I post them all on there. Usually I'm getting better about it. So it's the same day it goes up. I guess everything I need to say is that we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you, Bye. 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 Bye